and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bobs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbobs.com. The Associated Press reports the Vatican has arrested the feminine activist who on Christmas Day bared her chest and snatched the statue of baby Jesus in the life-size nativity scene in the center of St. Peter's Square, according to a spokesman on Friday, emphasizing that the protest insulted the faithful gathered to celebrate Christmas. Ukrainian activist Yana Zidanova was being held for questioning with possible charges including carrying out obscene acts in public, insults, and theft. The topless woman grabbed the baby Jesus statue about an hour after the Pope offered his Christmas blessing on Thursday. A Vatican guard immediately covered her with his cape and detained her while Zidanova was clutching the figure shouting, God is woman. Vatican spokesman Reverend Federico Lombardi noted that the incident was being taken seriously both because of the location and the solemnity of the event on which it intruded, saying it aimed to intentionally offend the religious feelings of numerous people. He noted that three members of the feminine activist group had previously targeted the Vatican with another protest last month, bearing their chest, as is the feminine hallmark in St. Peter's Square to protest the Pope's visit to the European Parliament. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Antiwar.com reports, recent reports out of the Islamic State territory are declaring the region a failed state with shortages of medicine and rising food prices. The major city of Mosul has run out of chlorine, making its drinking water dangerous. The Islamic State capital of Raqqa isn't much better, with electricity available only a few Zone. I'm Brooke Alvarez. Our top story tonight, Congress has passed a bill naming incomprehensible shouting the official language of the United States. I'm sick and tired of listening to people who say that Americans should not know what to know, and that's not what it is, what the policy is. The red-blooded American is what we have in this day and age. Under the new law, public school classes will only be taught in incomprehensible shouting, and government agencies will no longer offer translators to non-shouting speakers. In addition, a new test will be added to the naturalization process whereby potential immigrants must prove they have a working knowledge of incomprehensible shouting before they're granted citizenship. The movement started in 2008 with a grassroots organization called Americans for Doing It Right because we got it now because who else right? Come on! This is the Onion News Network, a tomahawk of honesty in the skull of lies. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. It is the live Saturday edition of the program here on a, what is essentially a holiday weekend. I'm sure a lot of people are still taking it uh, pretty easy. If you're enjoying your time, well, you're welcome to call in and bring up whatever's on your mind tonight, or maybe you're angry about something. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, too. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I'm hoping at some point we'll hear from a photographer arrested in Ohio uh, just a few days ago, right before, uh, I guess right before Christmas, during a protest, one of these die-in protests that was apparently happening at a mall. So we'll uh, keep our fingers crossed for that. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. And I still have some interesting sort of holiday-related uh, stories here. This one from Sycamore Township, Ohio where this week the local government in a town just outside of Cincinnati has ordered a man to remove a zombie nativity scene that he built on his own property. Resident Jason Dixon was recently sent two zoning violations in the mail, stating the government had received complaints about the display in his yard and that it violated the town's rules on the size and placement of yard structures. 
Dixon was also told if he didn't comply with the order by Friday that he would be fined $1,000 and face other possible legal penalt- uh, penalties. In a lot of places, uh, Daryl, the uh, the fines are per day. Yes. So I'm actually surprised. It's, uh, it seems like it's a lot lower than it could be. I mean, sure, $1,000 isn't cheap, but I know that in a lot of places it's 500 bucks a day that the violation goes on. Like after the date that they tell you it needs to be removed by, it then starts accruing $500 a day. It's likely many of Dixon's neighbors have decorations scattered all over their yards and houses, but it seems that he was specifically targeted targeted because he was doing something different and possibly offending some of the more sensitive people in the neighborhood, which surely shouldn't be illegal. This story, by the way, from thefreethoughtproject.com. Dixon is usually known for his elaborate Halloween displays because he's the manager of a haunted house attraction. But this year, he decided to extend the Halloween season all the way through Christmas and have fun with some decorations that he already had in stock. He said, quote, I want a nativity that I worked and, and I worked with what I had. The neighbors don't like it. My father hates it. And anything bad that happens, he blames it on that. On the average, we probably get 30 or 40 cars stopping and taking pictures, getting out with their camera. People that follow zombie movies and stuff like that love it. I've lived here for 15 years, and I've never had a violation of any kind. It's a holiday decoration. I know if it was a real pretty nativity scene, they wouldn't be saying anything. Yeah, and... Well, even if it was a real pretty nativity scene and people were stopping to, you know, like walk around this guy's yard and look at whatever decorations he had, they would probably still have a problem. And I say that because I remember when I was younger, you know, well well under being a teenager, there was a house in the Birmingham area that every year they would have you know, their entire yard decorated with Christmas lights. They would have stuff up on the roof. And people would go and park and walk around this guy's yard. And he had no problem. You know, that's why he did it. And every year it got more elaborate. And then the city council uh, came up with some sort of requirement that, you know, basically it was aimed at this one specific guy. And... You know, I, I don't know what the wording of the ordinance was, but basically it was a cease and desist against having elaborate Christmas decorations. The There's actually an updated story here, Daryl, about this. from This one's from WLWT, which is out of Cincinnati, I think, where apparently supporters have offered to pay the fine for him. Good. If he leaves the, uh, the display up and... A st- Allegedly, he has decided to go ahead and leave it up. Now, what will happen, you know, a lot of times the these governments can do more than what they might initially threaten. So right. I, I find myself wondering if they're going to somehow escalate this uh, to whatever the next level might be. The $1,000 fine may certainly be issued, and then they may come up with some other way to come at him. I don't know what it would be. Another zoning violation. They may, you know, generally, if you let a government bureaucrat who's its job to do zoning inspection, if you let them on your property, then there is a good chance they can find something to come after you for. Something in addition to this particular nativity scene. Or even if you never actually agree to have them come on your property, they can still... And I I don't know what the rules necessarily are in Ohio, but I believe it's fairly standard. Anything that they can see without, you know, like crossing into your backyard across a fence or, you know, anything else, if Mm -hmm. they can see it and, you know, unless you have a no trespassing sign, they can, you know, walk up your driveway, walk up the sidewalk to your front door and anything they can see from there, they can hit you with. According to a story over at KCTV5, Dixon had until Friday to take the scene down. According to documents, Sycamore Township does not allow structures to be located in the front or the side yard to occupy more than 30, 35% of the area. Also, the primary structure must be three feet from the street and six feet from the house. Dixon says they actually said that it's taking up about 35% of the yard, and it's not. We did the calculations, and it's like 14 or 17%. 
No officials from Sycamore Township came by the zombie nativity on Friday. Fox 19 Now's Lindy Wapshaw reached out to Sycamore Township officials to ask if they planned to come by the home to serve Dixon the violation, but they did not wish to comment on the matter. Of course they didn't wish to comment. And it would be kind of funny if this actually did wind up going to court Mm -hmm. and then... You know, somebody has to make the judge do math to figure out if it's actually less than 35%. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if all they were just doing was essentially blustering and, you know, puffing themselves up and trying to intimidate someone into doing something that's not even illegal by their own uh, ordinances to where they're probably not going to bring the charges if they know that they're in the wrong already, if they know they were just simply using their threats to intimidate this man. And by the way, uh, there's apparently now a crowdfunding site that has raised, or I don't know if, I don't know what is raised yet here, but the goal is $5,000. They're not quite there yet, about 10% of the way there. But uh, apparently some of his supporters put this up with the intention of raising five grand for him to make a better zombie nativity scene for 2015. Nice. So they would be able to, if they actually do hit him with the fine, and if for some reason, you know, either he doesn't take it to court or he goes to court and the judge is also bad at math and they find him guilty... Okay, so there's a thousand to pay the fine and four thousand to build a bigger, better nativity. I think it's it's a good story. I'm I'm really glad to hear that he is not just capitulating and buckling under the pressure and taking the the scene down people uh, you know a lot of people love it i'm sure some people are offended by this uh, but you don't have a right not to be offended and if somebody wants to put some sort of a you know ridiculous diorama in their front yard then as far as i'm concerned they should be able to do that do you disagree you're welcome to call in toll free here at 855 450 free are you the kind of person who would have made the complaint phone call to the government are you the, the, the kind of person who would turn a neighbor in for the contents of their front yard if you think it's offensive? I would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE because he's claiming that his neighbors are saying they didn't do it. Uh, so, you know, that doesn't mean they actually didn't do it. it. just may mean they may not want him to know they did it. Well, it could, it could be one of these things like what happened with uh, the couch on the side of your yard mm-hmm. several years ago. Where it was a government bureaucrat that That's called right. the other government bureaucrat agency and said, I want to file an anonymous complaint. Well, the interesting thing was about that, Daryl, at the very end, uh, when it went finally went to trial, because I did go to, to trial over that, uh, in the uh, court in the courtroom when the man who was uh, the government agent in question, the man who wrote the citation to me, uh, was on the stand, I did ask him who it was that gave him the report, who was the reporting party, and he did not want to answer. But the judge actually made him answer, and that's how I found out who it was. That's how I found out that it was a government bureaucrat. So that would be another thing. You know, if they did come after him, then maybe he would actually get to find out who it was that complained against him. Although I wouldn't get my hopes up for that. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here tonight. That's toll-free, 855-450-3733. The zombie nativity scene. Are you upset? Would you be the one calling in the complaint? We'd love to hear from you. You can also bring up anything you want coming up here on Free Talk Live's live Saturday show. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. When it was unveiled in September 1787, the Constitution's opponents feared it would erode the power and authority of states. But as Madison wrote in Federalist No. 8, the state governments will have the advantage of the federal government, and they'd serve as an essential check against centralization. State legislatures would elect senators to be delegates to the new federal government, and they, along with officials in each state, would serve as a check against any expansion of federal power. And further, state governments were closer to voters and could be held to close account. Thus, the states worked as a barrier against the growth of federal power and any encroachments on individual rights. Finding the right balance of state and federal power to protect individual rights has remained a vexing question throughout American history. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free to bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE, the live Saturday edition of the program with you in studio tonight. It's Ian. And Daryl. Don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. Something else you can do over at freetalklive.com is you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, and that'll get you a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee. Now, it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees because once you get your free pound, you pay the shipping cost to get it. You'll then be on their auto ship program and you get to determine how often and how much coffee you would like shipped to you. Um, the uh, coffee's great. It's competitively priced, but something special is being done with BuzzBox and Free Talk Live and Kiva.org, which is a website that allows folks to send out micro loans to people in a ver in very difficult parts of the world, people in poverty, help them change their own lives for the better. So when you order coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, you're helping fund micro loans. In fact, every ten listeners. Essentially, uh, every 10 listeners ordering at coffee.freetalklive.com allows us to fund one new microloan every single month. So it's a great program. You get great coffee. Get your first pound free. Just pay the shipping cost, and you can cancel your subscription at any time. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The zombie nativity scene is still up, apparently. Now, I don't know how long after Christmas uh, he's going to keep it up, but... They wanted him to take it down, and he has refused to do so uh, in a Sycamore Township, Ohio, wondering if anybody supports the takedown of the zombie scene. Who would be the kind of person who would call in a complaint about this to city code enforcement? We'd love to hear from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We have Anonymous calling from Charleston, West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, what's on your mind? 
hey, listen, uh, this guy in Ohio, this, the nativity scene, I, I don't know exactly, or zombie nativity scene, I really don't care what it is, but um, I know for a fact that if you dig into the, you know, whatever citation or whatever it was he got from the city, uh, if you start digging into that, you will find that somewhere in that it has its roots in the IPMC, the International Property Maintenance Code. Now, I've dealt mm-hmm. with this twice before in West Virginia, and I know two people that it's just about it just about well, two that are just about ruined. Um, now, is this like the boilerplate uh, that the UN is putting out there or something? I'm not real sure. I know that it has its roots in Agenda 21, but that's as far as I'm willing to go to say anything else mm-hmm. on that. Except that I know, I mean, it does. You dig into there, it, it, so there, there's more to it than you could imagine of everything that it touches and they can pretty much use it for whatever they want to use it for if they you know it's because it's the the uh it's based on the uh you know the the, 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 what the code official says you know so whatever the code official says is what it is it's ridiculous i mean you can you can dig it up online it's online if you look it up online you'll find it but um, and I imagine there are a lot of cities and, and towns that have adopted this. Uh, I, what was it? The IPMC, International Property Maintenance Code. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's in. I mean, I've seen. I mean, I've seen several. I mean, not me personally, but people that I have been close to. One that it's just it ruined almost to, just totally. And uh, I mean, he had nothing left. And uh, by the time it was over, and then another one that we just got in. You know, and you know, try to get in here. Just, just hit them with everything you have. Is what you basically have to do. You have to. You, know, you can try to nail them legally. We got lucky. Well, it's hard to go up against the town. I mean, they have what appears to be almost unexhaustible resources to come after you. So I understand why people don't want to fight City Hall, but I think this guy's a hero for keeping his yeah. uh, nativity scene up under under threat. Absolutely. Keep it up. Keep going. You you have to you have to stand up to them. Thanks, Anonymous. I appreciate your call tonight. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. You're welcome to comment. Maybe you've got a zoning nightmare story you want to tell us about. It doesn't have to be related to the zombie nativity scene because a lot of people have gone through this where they've been targeted by these government bureaucrats, forced by the threat of violence, uh, by the threat of arrest, by the threat of stealing someone's home. From them uh, to you know to make whatever arbitrary changes some bureaucrats who you don't know usually you know these are total strangers that they foist upon you. Let's go to Virgil. He's in Ohio. This is actually the gentleman I was expecting to call in tonight. Uh, Virgil, a, a longtime listener of the, the program, supporter of Free Talk Live. You got arrested this week. You're a photographer, and uh, you finally got your rights denied. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Hi guys. Good evening. How are you? Hey, good. You were at a die-in. Is that right? Yes, yes. So uh, a couple of days ago, uh, several local organizations have scheduled a protest. Uh, it's called a die-in, where uh, largely black protesters are uh, are basically imitating a, uh, a death. They're all falling down at the same time on the floor uh, to sympathize with the many black, you know, young black men that have been killed by police. Uh, there was a recent shooting here in town in Beaver Creek, Ohio where a 22-year-old uh, holding a BB gun in a local Walmart was uh, shot and killed by one of the local cops. So oh, yeah, I remember you called in and told us about that. That was pretty outrageous. That's right. So this is a protest in relation to, uh, you know, related to that shooting. Yeah. Okay. And so, so, the, so, so yeah. the idea is that uh, people go into the mall and then they die in what, like the food court? Or is it all over the mall? Is it all done in one place? How's that? How's it work? Yeah, it, it was done in the in, in the central area of the mall where Santa Claus was seeing little ch- children, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was yeah. So it was it was a good area. You know, at the same time, b- because this took place on private property, mm-hmm. uh, and I did not fully agree with with the location, I did not go there as a protester. Instead of I, I you know I, I put on a press badge and I went as a photographer and as a journalist, uh, mostly to document what was happening. So. Uh, after the die-in, um, you know, the protesters grabbed, uh, they had a few bullhorns, and, and they started chanting and, and kind of walking through the mall and, and heading out. So that's so they were the using a bullhorn police. inside the mall? That's right. Oh, that's wow. Right. So yeah. It was, it was that sort of definitely crosses really the line. Loud. You know, before you go on with your, your arrest, um, it, just let's talk a little bit about the whole private property aspect of this particular 
protest because it's an interesting right. kind of protest. You know, the idea of feigning one's death to bring attention to police abuse. I get that. That's cool. Um, that it happened on private property, I don't think is necessarily wrong unless the private property owner specifically asked for it to not happen there. Otherwise, you know, hey, come have your dine at my mall and then go eat at the food court, sure. right? Like, yeah, let's bring 200 people into the mall for an hour or two or however long it, it goes on for. That means, you know, the longer they're there, the more likely they are to actually buy something, <laughs> and uh, including right. food. But uh, I could also understand if it was a rowdy group or something that was known for breaking things or, you know, they began to uh, cause problems. That could be uh, certainly could be an issue. And I would consider someone walking through the mall with a megaphone uh, to definitely be problematic. Yeah, it was not that disruptive. I did not consider it. I mean, obviously, shoppers, they all stopped what they were doing. Some stores closed their doors because they didn't know what's happening. They're kind of, you know, freaking out. Hmm. Uh, but it was fairly disruptive, so th- that's that's really why I disagreed with the location. Right. They did the same thing about a week prior in the Walmart where the shooting took place. Now oh, wow. that I actually completely agree with because the the, the Walmart management folks uh, in fact became complicit with the uh, with the police by refusing to release uh, you know the video of the shooting and so on. Mm. So so that I actually kind of agreed with. Um, you know, to, to some extent. So but this the, uh, uh, die-in's happening. It's Beaver Creek, Ohio. Is that that was the location? That's right. In a, that's right. And it yes. was inside a mall. A fairly large mall is one of the one of the largest malls in this area here, right across the street from the Walmart where the you showed up with your place. camera to document, and you ended up in handcuffs. We'll get the rest of your story here in moments. More with Virgil. The toll-free number here is eight fifty-five four fifty free. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, (laughs) crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Researchers have definitively concluded that it, all of it, is some kind of sick joke. The Princeton study suggests that the entirety of existence, including time, marriage, migratory patterns of birds, continental drift, life itself, photosynthesis, human society, and the changing of the seasons, are all part of a massive twisted ruse orchestrated by a spiteful cosmos. Look at you morons, taking stupid video for your pointless newspaper. Everything's a joke. I'm a joke, you're a joke. The whole universe is a joke. We at The Onion Week in Review are compelled to inform viewers that while this entire segment is indeed one small part of the giant perverse joke, the upshot is that the next minute of your life will be no more or less pointless than if you were to spend it with a loved one, mentoring an at-risk youth, or simply wallowing in your own feculence. In other news, Harley Davidson and Jack Daniels collaborate on a local felony. A churchgoer blanks on why she's lighting a votive candle. And please ring the bell and the boy will come round momentarily for your bags. For more news, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. And that's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. With you in studio, you've got Ian. And Daryl. We are talking with a photographer who was on the scene at a recent die-in that happened at Beaver Creek, Ohio's Fairfield Commons Mall. Uh, video I have not yet seen, but from what I understand, it does exist uh, there apparently were multiple people with cameras around, and uh, we do have the gentleman with us who we're going to continue uh, with that call here in a moment. Also want to invite you to our website at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy all the features that are waiting for you there. Maybe there's something that you found on the Internet you want to submit as possible show prep, stuff for us to talk about. You can do that over at freetalklive.com right there on the front page of the website. And you can also vote on the other items that were put there by listeners just like you. So drop by freetalklive.com to get interactive. Virgil, uh, you're back with us here. You are, and is your last name pronounced Vaduva? How do you pronounce your last name, Virgil? Are you with us? It's uh, Vaduva. Vaduva. Yes. I, apo I apologize about that. Virgil Vaduva okay. is uh, is with us here, and uh, you are an independent photographer, or were you working for, I see another report here saying you were working for a newspaper. Well, that's actually an online news uh, newspaper, so-called newspaper that I started with several ag local activists uh, about four or five years ago. So, oh, okay. yes, it's actually our our uh, news source. Oh, cool. Uh, we all have, uh, yeah, we all have badges. We all uh, write uh, and, and and publish articles. So, um, we've been doing this for quite a while. It's not like we're we're just now claiming we're journalists you know, in the last week or so. Well, apparently, well, even if you had just started claiming you were a journalist, it still should have been legit right. as far right. as I'm concerned. But uh, but apparently your establishment and your badge didn't help you in this case. Uh, there was a die-in going on and you wanted to cover it. You were, uh, in, were you inside the mall for, uh, for part of it and then you went outside? Because were you yeah. arrested outside? Yes, I was arrested outside. Uh, the, the cops seem, they, they seem to have developed this strategy where, they uh, they identify the loudest people in a crowd, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason they arrest them as they are leaving. They what they did they ordered everyone to leave. They kind of started you know pushing people into this you know hallway by by the entrance, and they trapped you know all of us there. They trapped journalists there. They trapped protesters, and, and even shoppers, just random people who had nothing to do with this event. They were all trapped there, women mm -hmm. with children and strollers. And I, I specifically told them, I said, uh, guys, I'm not with these protesters. I'm media. I need to get out of here so, you know, I can cover this from, from the back end. And they said, well, we don't care. Get out. Get out. So so people started kind of trampling each other. And as we were leaving, they started basically picking some of the loudest uh, folks in the crowd and arresting – in a crowd and arresting them, grabbing them. And, and they had the whole uh, thing set up. They had a table for processing set up. Wow. Uh, you know, zip ties, plastic. You know, they were set up. They were pretty much all planned and set up for for mass arrests. Um, hmm. so, yeah, and the the uh, thing they, of sort of corralling people. I noticed they started doing that in about oh seven or oh eight. Was the first time that I really noticed it. Was that Democratic National Convention uh, or Republican National Convention? At the Republican Convention, but there was something that happened before that. I don't mm -hmm. remember what it was. But at the Republican so, so convention, what, what that? at the Republican the convention, strategy? there were people in a park, and there was a right. sidewalk on one side and a bridge going across a river, and the cops came down the sidewalk and said, everybody disperse. And as people started right. trying to walk across the bridge, cops are coming across the bridge, mm. 
and they trapped everybody in the park and right. just arrested everybody, people that were walking through the park, protesters, you know, people with cameras. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I don't know if this is some research they've done to find out how to deal with protests or, or what the deal is, but that's exactly what they did this time. And uh, and they grabbed the very first person they grabbed was the guy with the bullhorn, of course. Of course. And, uh, and then someone else took over, and then they grabbed him. And, and there were about, uh, I don't know, 12 people, 14, 15 people arrested together. And mm. uh, the reason they grabbed me is because I, I was taking pictures. And, and I've been writing negative pieces, or uh, maybe not negative, critical pieces about this police department for several years now. Uh, and I'm sure they probably were. They've been waiting for this for a while. But apparently they set up this line of cones, these small, you know, one foot, you know, two foot uh, cones, yellow cones or orange cones on the sidewalk or uh, on the driveway there. And um, I was not aware that these were police cones. And I just kind of kicked a couple of them out of the way uh, because they were uh, people were tripping over them and, and they just seemed to be in a, in a place. And apparently they were police cones, and that gave them the reason <laughs> to arrest me. Uh, yes, Interfering yes, with story, government story. officials. Destruction yes, so, of government property. Yeah, what were the charges, by I, the way? Well, after I kicked the, the, the cones, I was starting to walk away. Uh, I didn't know I did anything wrong. Uh, and I heard people screaming, Virgil, they're coming from you, for you. Oh, they're boy. coming for you. And I turn around, and, and ironically, the best uh, shots I got from this protest were the shot, the two or three shots I got, uh, you know, of the cops charging me. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and they were just really nice shots. And, and they charged me with trespassing and uh, obstruction of government or official business or something like that. And in Ohio, these are uh, these are misdemeanors, but unfortunately, do carry a uh, you know jail jail time with them. So obviously, I don't want to go to jail. So I'm uh, I'm trying to find a decent criminal uh, defense attorney. So here tr trespassing and perhaps. obstructing government of administration. Yes, yes, government business or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, had you been ordered to leave? Uh, yes. After they ordered me to leave, uh, I told them I'm trying to leave. There were people to step over. I didn't want to step over anyone, and I was in the process of leaving, just mm -hmm. like everyone else they've arrested. So, yes, I was trying to leave. But the interesting th thing is that uh, a mall employee never told me to leave. Uh, so the, the mall security folks really kind of screw things up because they never clarified – you know, how media falls, where media falls into this or where normal shoppers. I mean, if I was there to buy some batteries at Radio Shack, uh, am I still media or am I a shopper? I These lines yeah. are pretty gray. No doubt about it. Now, the, is this your first arrest, Virgil? Yes, yes. I, in this country. In this country is the first <laughs> arrest. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so not the first time you've ever been arrested. How long has it been for you? It's been at least 20 years. I was a teenager when I was arrested last in Romania for posting some graffiti, uh, doing some graffiti. I see. Uh, so. on, a, on a building. But, so that uh, one was kind of legit this then. Is yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was government property, so I own uh, it, so I don't know. Okay. Well, then I'm with you there. <laughs> so you're wanting to take this to uh, to trial. It sounds like if you were ordered to leave, then you were leaving. And so how they could arrest you for trespass while you were in the process of leaving, I'm not real sure about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, because it's he confusing. didn't leave fast know. enough. Right. But right. they That's were exactly preventing him is. from leaving. He didn't leave fast enough. Like, he should have left before they said leave. Now, Beaver Creek, how many <laughs> police officers are on the, the force in Beaver Creek, Ohio? I would... I would say about 30 cops or so. Uh, ironically, one uh, another another media guy uh, called called 911 to report the cops arresting media folks like me <laughs> and the dispatcher said that there's nobody to take your call or, or help you because all the cops are have the protest uh, <laughs> but yes they, their entire their entire police force was there they called uh, they called for help for from neighboring you know jurisdictions there were probably about 40 or 50 cruisers there all together so it was, it was a pretty big deal I, I don't think the town has ever seen anything like that. So yeah, it's no very un, unusual, very disruptive, uh, and it's good good way to get attention, uh, certainly. But uh, it didn't end very well for me because I ended up spending about four or five hours in jail uh, when I could have been at home with my family. So yeah, uh, no kidding. Yeah. So how did you end up getting out of jail? Did someone bail you out? Yes, yes. Uh, someone who might I don't even know actually oh, paid wow. my bail. I was very happy. What about was that. the bail? They bailed. The, 
Uh, it was 155 bucks, which is 10 percent of uh, of the total. So it's about 1,500 dollars. Oh wow! They okay, so they used a bail bondsman then to get you out. I don't know. I don't know. Someone paid the bail for it, for all of us, and hmm. I was very thankful for that. And uh, I'm trying to raise some money. So if I could uh, plug my my money uh, raising campaign, yeah, please. I'd appreciate it. Where do where do folks yeah, go, go to? Do to that? Uh, yeah, GoFundMe.com uh, slash Press Freedom. That's easy. So uh, if, if people can make some donations, I would definitely uh, appreciate it. GoFundMe.com slash Press Freedom. Press Freedom. And, uh, and uh, Ian, you have uh, you have made a donation in Bitcoin, so I, I I'm very that. thankful for that as well. Yeah, Thank and, you. Um, you and, and that Bitcoin address is on the GoFundMe page, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, yes, good. it is. It's so right people there. Can- People can go there and contribute. Uh, Virgil, do you want to hang on and talk a little bit more about this and your relationship Absolutely. with the cops there? All right, Absolutely. hang on. We'll come back with uh, more with uh, photographer Virgil Vadava. He's with us here, and uh, you can talk to us at 855-450-FREE. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end-of-year deals in over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 since time began tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties now there's a movie that aims back the government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. 
For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll free. No one is safe from the police state, not even credentialed media. As uh, we're talking with Virgil Vaduva, he is a photographer. He works with his own newspaper, online uh, publication, I guess. Can you really call it a newspaper if it's not in print? Uh, GreenHerald.com, G-R-E-E-N-E, GreenHerald is the Green County Herald. And uh, Virgil is one of the reporters and photographers. He was at a die-in that happened at a local mall uh, there in uh I guess this was in Ohio, uh, Beaver Creek Police Department. It was their first major mass arrest event. Uh, the protesters were having a die-in at the mall in protest of various different police violence, specifically the shooting uh, death of a young man in a Walmart for carrying around a BB gun. And uh, so we're going to go back to Virgil. He's still with us here to talk a little further about his experience. You were arrested as you were trying to leave the area, trying to leave the mall. You'd gotten outside of the mall at that point. And as you were walking away, you kicked aside a couple of cones. Did you even knock the cones over or were you just like moving them with your foot? A little ways. No, they, they were they were kicked over. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I I I did give them a one of them. I gave it a pretty good kick, but. Uh, um, yeah, and, and the, the truth is that I, I'm not the only one that got threatened or arrested necessarily. There were mainstream media reporters that also got threatened, although they did not necessarily end up in jail. Yeah, and I heard about that. It's, it's interesting that you mentioned, uh, you know, credentialed, uh, you know, journalists, because once I made it in handcuffs to the uh, to their processing center there, they had a table set up with, you know, a number of uh, cops processing arrestees, Mm -hmm. one of them started mocking me, uh, asking me what news agency do I work for and whether or not I'm a real journalist. Mm. So I found that to be very interesting. Uh, Apparently, they don't they don't accept uh, credentials unless you're from one of the mainstream uh, companies or mainstream news media outlets that, uh, you know, kind of toe the line that the police feed them. So I found that to be very interesting and ironic. Interesting. And I, I definitely want to know more about the arrest, but before we continue, you said that you have a Bitcoin address on the GoFundMe page. Uh, yes, sir. At some point, GoFundMe will remove that Bitcoin address Ooh, that's right. from Uh-oh. that page. So you will want to set up, you know, maybe something on the, uh, newspaper, the newspaper website. Site. Okay. That has the Bitcoin address plus a link to the GoFundMe. Now you're speaking from uh, okay. experience, right? They uh, not personal experience. No, it happened it to Derek, Derek. J. That's right. It was Derek. Yeah, I did because they that. want that's, the that's they they want all the payments to go through them so that they get the you know nine percent or whatever it is. Right. Thanks for letting me know. Yes. Yeah, as of right now, you can still go to GoFundMe.com slash Press Freedom to contribute to this, and there is still the Bitcoin address there for the moment. I will go ahead and post a link and the Bitcoin address on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can go and Thank access you, yeah. those over at news.freetalklive.com. Now, Virgil, uh, you, do you live in Beaver Creek? Are you nearby? What, how close are you generally? I live nearby, maybe about 15 or 20 minutes away. So Not far at all. So is it? do, do you have experience with these officers? Do they know you by name, by sight? They or? do. Okay. They do. They all know me by, by name. Uh, they, they call me by name whenever they see me in mm-hmm. places, and— and our uh, our interaction started a number of years ago when they detained me for also open carry uh, in in Beaver Creek. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's when our wonderful relationship started. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel like they've been waiting, like they've been salivating for the opportunity Absolutely. to finally get you? Yes, I was told that they were actually high fiving each other after they arrested me. So, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Well, I have to say uh, congratulations on your arrest. Uh, that you, You've joined the ranks, which are ever-growing, by the way, the ever-growing ranks of photographers and videographers who have been not only right. threatened but actually arrested by uh, various police officers all across the country. Did, um, did you get coverage over at Photography is Not a Crime? Yes. Actually, after the arrest, uh, Carlos Miller added me to his uh, 
his secret, super secret uh, contributors group. So ah. I, this is like a like a rite of passage for me. I, I, I'm wow. very I'm very very honored for for being arrested and, and having this happen. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> I have not been added to that group, so uh, and I got arrested. <laughs> So, uh, I have you beat, Ian. I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's a, it's a sad thing, though. This is not uncommon, is. what happened to you, and it's becoming more and more likely that these things will occur. And, uh, unfortunately, it's not like the media gathers together to help one another out. I mean, there's certainly no outpouring of support from the mainstream no. media who's coming to your aid and hiring attorneys or you know anything like that. You're, you're going this alone. Absolutely, absolutely. Fortunately, there is a criminal defense attorney here in town who has offered free consultation uh, to all the people that got arrested uh, two days ago. Uh, most he's, most he's attorneys give free guy. consultations, just saying. Yeah, well, you know, I, who knows what's going to come <laughs> out of it, but that's a good point, actually. Yeah. You're, you're right. So, uh, so we'll see what comes out of it. Um, I'm hoping that they will drop the charges against everyone, but uh, knowing how much they dislike me, I would not be surprised if they try to throw the book at me and and try to make my life as miserable as they can. So uh, I'm hoping things will turn out okay. I can't really afford to go to jail or spend any time in, in prison or anything like that, God forbid. I do have a full-time job, and uh, you know I, need, I have many other responsibilities to take care of. So um, th this is not a, a good thing. I did not wake up uh, that day to, to plan and get, get arrested. That you rarely plan, do. So. Rarely does anyone right. plan to, right. uh, to get arrested, but they certainly had plans to arrest, and uh, you, right. you helped them fulfill those those plans. Keep us in the loop, will you, Virgil, as, as far as, you know, how this develops, when it goes to trial. Do you have a, a court hearing date already? It's on the 30th. Yes, I will definitely enter a not guilty plea. Oh, okay. And, uh, arraignment. People, so, you, so you've got an arraignment, arraignment coming up on the 30th. That's right. Okay. That's right. And people have been getting court dates uh, or trial dates for March. Can you, know, you get some, a video camera in uh, court in Ohio? Is that possible? I looked at the court rules. It appears that you can get video from the court. I haven't worked out from all the details them? yet, but I will... Yes, so, I will try to do my best. So you cannot bring uh, your own camera in? You have to rely on their system? Yes. Ugh. Yes, they do have a video feed that you can request. So oh, it boy. seems like there, there is pause. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, Ian, I wanted to say one thing before before I uh, I go. Uh, you guys have been, Free Talk Life has been an inspiration to me personally. And ever since I started listening to you guys, uh, I've I become, uh, you know, much more active in the in the liberty movement. And you personally, you have been kind of a you know, real uh, example for me personally. So I really appreciate that. I appreciate the, everything you guys are doing. I appreciate the fact that you're up there, you know, up front pushing liberty and freedom. And, uh, and, and thanks for all your help. I really appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Virgil. Keep your head up out there. It's, uh, it's a rough road, but I appreciate you going down it and, uh, and, and helping show others what things are really like out there. And I'm looking forward to seeing the video, which you have not yet released um, due to legal issues or whatever. That's but right. I'm sure you'll let us know when that's available. Thank you so much. All Have right. a good night. Thanks, uh, Virgil. Bye. That's Virgil Viduva from the Greene County Herald. He got arrested for being the media. And you could, too. And even if you don't have your own website to submit to, you can still go ahead and call yourself Free Talk Live producer if you want to, if you ever need to get into somewhere and need to act like you're the media. And just You can be the media these days by virtue of having some sort of device uh, or even a pen and paper uh, to where, you know, taking notes. If you've, like, for instance, in some courtrooms, you can't bring a video device, so right. you have to take notes. Um, in other places, you can bring video cameras. But anytime you're interacting with the government uh, guys, there's a good chance that one of these police officers is going to come up with a reason to arrest you. This, I mean, this guy got arrested for knocking over a cone in a parking lot. And not leaving fast enough. Well, right. I mean, he was on his way out, apparently, and on the way out, knocks over a cone. Now, I don't know if it was out of anger or not, but whatever. If somebody knocks over a cone, and they shouldn't have, then the appropriate thing to do is to say, Hey! Hey, buddy! Can you pick that cone up for me, please? That's not appropriate. You know, just may, maybe try, right. uh, like, a gentleman to but, handle the situation. Yeah, like, I, I could certainly put myself in his shoes if they're telling me, You have to leave. And I'm trying to leave, but they have everything blocked off. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff in my way that I can easily move. I'm going to move something. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about press freedom, the status of the police continually threatening and arresting photographers. You can go to photographyisnotacrime.com. You can see an unending array of stories that comes out day after day of similar uh, incidents. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. We'll start with Michael in Virginia Beach listening to WNIS. Hello, Michael. 
Hi. Uh, you had such a great suggestion two weeks ago tonight about how to hold uh, police departments and uh, prosecutors accountable. Uh, we were talking about situations like Ferguson and uh, uh, this Eric, uh, I forget the guy's name in New York that was killed. Garner. But Garner. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, uh, I'm wondering about uh, tying it in with two other things. Uh, what you're talking about tonight, about the press, and I like the idea of uh, becoming a uh, Free Talk Live producer. That, that's right down my alley. Uh, Stand by, I'm, Michael. I'm not sure where you're going with this, but we'll let you finish up your thoughts coming up in hour number two. After the news, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More Free Talk Live coming up. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, December 26, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,175, silver around $15.75, and Bitcoin is trading around $322. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, private contractors who once played a major role in the U.S. occupation of Iraq could be heading back to Baghdad. An unnamed senior U.S. government official told Reuters on Wednesday the United States is preparing to ramp up its use of private contractors in Iraq. The official indicated the contractors will be used to support the roughly 1,700 troops in Iraq, along with diplomatic personnel. Since the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, the numbers of private contractors have rivaled troop figures. Critics and viewers agree the interview is less than a masterpiece. But thanks to threats from hackers that nearly derailed its release, it's become an event. Sony Pictures had initially called off the Christmas Day release after major theater chains dropped the movie that would have opened on as many as 3,000 screens. It has been released online as well as serving as a test for a new kind of movie release. The Associated Press reports that online game networks Xbox Live and PlayStation Network were offline much of Christmas Day in an apparent distributed denial-of-service attack 
possibly related to the release. Taking credit for the takedown is a group called Lizard Squad. Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered his government to curb rising vodka prices. Putin, who has been hit by increasing economic woes, said the high prices encourage the consumption of illegal and possibly unsafe alcohol. Russia's currency, the ruble, has lost value recently due to falling oil prices and Western sanctions. Annual inflation in Russia currently stands at 9.4%. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, December 26, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Just two miles from Ferguson, Missouri, 18-year-old Antonio Martin was shot and killed by a police officer outside a gas station late Tuesday night. The FreeThoughtProject.com reports that just hours into the case, there were already numerous conflicting reports, with friends and family members of the victim saying he was unarmed and the officer saying that Martin pointed a gun at him. Witnesses posting on Twitter under the Antonio Martin hashtag also say the gun did not appear at the scene until three hours after the shooting happened, and many of them were very close to the area and paying close attention. Police later released surveillance footage that does not corroborate the St. Louis County Police Department's narrative that the deceased had a gun. An Ohio homeowner was ordered by town officials to remove a nativity scene in front of his house that featured zombies instead of wise men and a baby Jesus. Fox News reports the nativity scene features life-size figures and a zombie baby Jesus with pale skin and pure white eyes. Sycamore Township does not allow structures to be located in the front or the side yard to occupy more than 35% of the area. Beachside memorials and religious services were planned across Asia Friday to mark the 10th anniversary of the Indian Ocean tsunami that left more than a quarter million people dead in one of modern-day history's worst natural disasters, according to the Associated Press. The Liberty Beat, brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights at 10 o'clock Eastern. Liberty-minded and comedy-focused. The Corey Moore Show. Catch it at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 26, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. I was doing my regular 11 o'clock security sweep around the perimeter of my house when I noticed a couple of young people having intercourse in the front seat of a car out in the street. So I ran inside and I grabbed my video camera. As you can imagine, I stood in those bushes for over 20 minutes watching these two degenerates grind against each other, and I'm thinking, this behavior is simply unacceptable. Now, if you think this is an isolated incident, you are dead to rights wrong. I have 36 hours of footage to prove it that I have personally collected from sickos just around my own town. For example, I saw perverts having sex in swimming pools clearly visible from the roofs of adjacent buildings, on boats that anybody could see with a telescope, at night on the beaches where they can easily be watched by anyone hiding behind a fence wearing their night vision goggles. It's simply disgusting. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. We're here as always. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you. With you tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. Coming up, Daryl, you've got a story about Pandora, which is the online radio company that kind of 
puts music together for folks. Yes. And their free speech case where they are opposing the imposition of royalties based on free speech. I'm interested in hearing how that exactly works. We'll get into that story if we get the chance. Your calls and comments come first. We go to Michael. He's in Virginia Beach. Michael, you said you wanted to, I guess, bring up the conversation that we've had certainly in the past a number of times about holding the police accountable. You said you wanted to tie it into a couple things. So go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, you also suggested one of the ways of holding them accountable is to deny the government money. And yes. I want to tie, I want to tie that in with uh, what you're doing with the jury association and encouraging people to hold government accountable by not convicting. And I think we should do that in the tax area. I think we should say. Uh, we should in, use our media to encourage juries not to convict anyone for income tax evasion or mm. for non-payment of income tax until Mexico has paid us back in full what? for all of the illegal aliens that they have funneled what? into this country. Mexico, first of all, does yes. not owe me anything. Uh, for I don't, you know, I'm not in an agreement with Mexico where they owe me something, and I don't think there's anything wrong with people coming here to make a better life for themselves. It's a shame. I had agreed with the, almost everything you said up until you got to that point. I like the well, idea wait, wait, of wait, wait, not wait. paying taxes, and I like the idea of using jury nullification. That is your right as a juror to vote not guilty, um, not based on the facts in the case, but based on your opinion about the law. So if you are like me and you think that the income tax is a bunch of nonsense, and needs to be stopped, and you're on a jury of someone who's facing income tax-related criminal charges, then you could vote not guilty, and you could use jury nullification to uh, to stop that person from going to prison and to help them out. And if if it's true, and it's true that if people refuse to convict folks who are who are charged with dodging taxes or whatever, then uh, then that would go a long way to really changing things. I think. And the essay on trial by jury by Lysander Spooner, he actually writes that juries should not convict anyone of a tax that they did not consent to hmm. being subjected to. I definitely do not consent uh, to taxes, Michael. So you had me up until that point, but then getting involved with uh, the border control, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I support open borders. I support freedom. I support, you know, if you support freedom on one issue, you should support freedom on all the issues, in my opinion. Okay. Okay, but here's my question. Why are we spending money that, that requires uh, taxes uh, to support so many of these illegal aliens that Mexico is helping come here? I don't understand your question. I'm not spending money because I don't pay uh, taxes to the federal government. Are you talking about like some local welfare program? No, I, I, I'm saying that it costs us to take care of these people. Uh, President Obama asked for $3.5 billion just for a, a group this summer that was coming across the border. That that is paid for with tax dollars. Well, I don't support so people um, pay, taking care of others without voluntarily choosing to do so. So if you're saying that people are being forced to pay for welfare programs, I have a problem with that, period. I have a problem with the force. I don't have a problem with who's receiving the welfare because even if you were to cut out – uh, even for you to somehow magically snap your fingers and make all the immigrants disappear, which would be a horrible thing, but even if you were to do that, that wouldn't end the welfare programs, and that's what you have the problem with, right? Or is it that you have a problem with certain people from other countries receiving welfare when they come here? Well, I, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the momentum in the public is with the illegal aliens, and we have to take advantage of that momentum and say, okay, well, let's focus on that one problem. Let's Did you say the momentum is much... with the illegal aliens? Uh, the momentum is to stop the illegal aliens. Most of the public is against it. Well, that they doesn't mean like they're the right. Idea. 
just because the majority of people think something doesn't mean they're right at all. That's uh, you know, that's a fallacy. It's a logical fallacy. Argumentum ad but populum. It, those people are wrong, it, and they need to leave those folks alone. If somebody wants to come make a better life for themselves here, why shouldn't they be able to? And by the way, you use terms like those people, you end up sounding like a racist. I don't know if that's what you are, but uh, it certainly doesn't sound good because a lot of the people that come here do not get on welfare. They don't need to be taken care of, and they make a better life for themselves, and they work hard for their to take care of their families. What's wrong with that? That's that's great. That's great. I'm talking about the the money that the federal government has acknowledged spending to deal. Well, you can't with control the what the federal family. government does. You know, all you control is what you do. And thank you, Michael, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you don't like what the federal government's doing, stop paying for it. That's what I do. Yeah. And I I would disagree with you on one thing, Ian. You said that when he says those people, blah, 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 it makes him sound like a racist. I would say it makes him sound more like a xenophobe than a racist. Yeah, that's true. Because a lot of the people who are against so-called illegal immigration will claim up and down they're not racist um but i think there is a there are a number of them who are i think that they use certainly the, their uh they use the program of immigration oppression to <laughs> cover for their racism uh, anyway let's continue with your calls and thoughts here matthew's in tallahassee you're on free talk live listening to wvft hello matthew oh hey mr ian hey you're this on the kind air. of off subject but uh i have something kind of like a trivia thing Sure. Did you know that in the battlefields of the dead during the civil or well, the war between the states, there were men out like vultures pulling out the teeth of the dead to fill barrels to go to Europe for the elite to have dentures? Huh. That's how I feel the government is going to treat us. They'd love to draw our blood and microchip us like animals. Well, there certainly are a number of people who uh, who think that that's the case, and I'm sure there are power-mongering folks out there who would love to microchip everybody. I think there's uh, there's something to be concerned with there. And and no, I didn't know that uh, that people were taking fillings out of the dead, but it doesn't really surprise well, they're me. They're taking their teeth. Their teeth. They're filling up barrels to bring overseas will make dentures out of. Them. Yeah, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's true, but it sounds believable. What do you think, Daryl? Certainly interesting if it is true. Matthew, anything else you want to share tonight? Do you think that's what the world's going to come to again, something like that? Well, I don't think you're going to see battlefields in the same way uh, that you do today or, uh, you know, that you did back in the day. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, scavengers are nothing new. And as far as your concerns with people trying to track and control others, obviously we know that's the case. But, you know, why, why microchip someone when you can just have them carry around a cell phone everywhere they go? I mean, that, that pretty well, much solves that too. problem. Hey, thanks for the call tonight, Matthew. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I don't want to sound like a Luddite or something like that. I, I have a cell phone, and it's handy, and I appreciate it, the fact that it, you know that I have it. It's something that I can use. If the police are getting out of control, I can pull out my phone. I can start recording. I use a program called Bambuser to do that. And uh, so technology is, of course, a double-edged sword. Right. Some can use it for good. Others can use it for evil. So, for instance, robots, you know, in the hands of the government, they'll be used to kill people. In the hands of companies, then they might be used to help people. Uh, You know, in the hands of a hospital, they might be used to fix people. So I'm not against technology, and I don't know if that caller was against technology, but I think there's some... There's some legitimate concerns out there, but at the same time, I don't think that we can slow down the technological progress. We just have to deal with uh, whatever it is that comes up through furthering technology, I think. Right. And I I think that it's a bad idea to try to stop technology because that's really in some ways. And I, I know that, you know, I'm making a stretch here. But in some ways, that's what caused the Middle Ages is you had certain people that were in control that stopped technology. A fear of knowledge, fear of expanding. And yeah. so, you know, you wound up having this 500-year period approximately that, you know, nothing really advanced. We'll come back with your calls and thoughts. You're welcome to share whatever's on your mind with us here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. It's Ian and Daryl. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. Check, it's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Phone records, financial and location data, PRISM, Tempora, X-Keyscore, Boundless Informant, Hey, I'll Scott Horton here for offnow.org. Now here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betrayed their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place. In state after state, I've lost count, more than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something, something important, something that can work if we do the work. Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. Take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. Don't forget to join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data. Right now, if you're just surfing on your regular Internet service provider, then they're probably logging all the websites you're visiting. We were just talking about how technology can be used in you know, different ways, can be used for good, can be used for, for evil. Well, you know, 
if you are surfing about and your uh, the company you're using to connect to the internet is gathering all of that information, they can certainly use that information against you. Uh, even if you don't think you're doing anything wrong, a lot of people don't think downloading movies and music is wrong, but yet it's you know it's it's widely done. And every now and then they go after people for that. So why not protect yourself? You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get signed up there. You download their software. It's easy. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. And if you're a Linux user, setup's a little different for you, but it's actually pretty simple to get, get rolling with Linux. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. As soon as you get the software installed and you connect your internet connection will be encrypted. So you're not changing your internet provider. You're still using the same old company, whatever it is you use, or whether it's your cell phone company or cable modem. Uh, you're still on their their connection. It's just that they can't know what you're doing anymore because you'll be encrypted thanks to ProXPN. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of their annual account. Now that breaks the price down to just under $5 per month, which is an amazing price considering with a premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So there's nothing to lose but your privacy. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get signed up there. Get started. Use promo code FTL50 when you're ready to upgrade and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. It's proxpn.com slash FTL. We go to your calls and thoughts. You can take control here. Let's go to Mick. He's in Charleston. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mick. Um, I remember reading uh, economic principle where if you block goods and services from one country to the next, then their people will come instead. And uh, I believe that the immigration problem is more the cause of protectionist policies of America concerning agricultural goods coming from Central and South America. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I certainly am opposed to protectionism. I think that there should be free trade. I think people should be able to, to buy and sell from whoever they and want. And when you say free trade, you mean real free trade, yeah. not these thousand-page treaties that set up limited free trade. Right, I mean trade without— regulations that they call free trade. Yeah, I mean trade without taxes, trade without rules, trade where the only rule is you know, if you can find someone else to buy or sell. And that's uh, that should be it. But Mick, how does that? Uh, how do those protectionist policies result in more people moving to the United States? Because they can't make a living farming in Central and South America, so they come hmm. here and build buildings instead, or farm here instead. But certainly, uh, it, that could be true. And, but then again, there are also other countries, there's other reasons to leave, right? So there's. it's not just because the U.S. is protectionist and has ridiculous tariffs. It may be because their local government is tyrannical and murdering people or whatever. I mean, there, there's all kinds of incentives to leave other, other countries and move to the United States. So you mentioned there was a problem with immigration. What's the problem from, from your viewpoint? Um. The problem is that we, we're not attributing it to the right cause. No, no, no. That's not the question I asked. What's the problem with immigration? You suggested that there was some sort of problem with it. What's, what is the problem? There's nothing wrong with people moving here, right? The, it, it, not in and of itself, but I, I guess that – I mean, I can only speak for myself – I would rather make a living where I'm at than have to move somewhere else to make a living. Well, that's your own personal and, and preference, if, and you're certainly free to have that. But what's the problem with other people doing differently than you? I, um, I, well, I'm a little paranoid. I, I, I think that, that there's machinations going on at, uh, at state levels that sort of— uh, you know, direct population um, tides to different areas based on tariffs, protectionist policies, drug war policies. I mean, all these governmental policies that have these population drifts consequences that that don't seem to be able to be well understood because they're so um, secret. 
So let me see if I'm understanding you, because that was a little bit obtuse for me. Uh, and Daryl, correct me if you know. If, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a little confused as well. So what you're saying is you believe there are machinations, meaning that you know people at the state governments uh, are trying to influence people to move in or out for political gain. I'm not sure what their 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 game is because. I mean, I just from from a local viewpoint, I can't see above the roof of my car that I make a living in. And so I just my imagination runs wild, you know. All right. Well, thanks for the call tonight, Mick. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Still don't really know what he was getting at there, but I'm going to try my best to extrapolate something uh, from it. Yeah, okay, sure. There could be people at the state level that, you know, are plotting to change things to, you know, encourage people to move in or encourage another certain group to move out. But really, you know, there's no point in getting paranoid about it. Whether they're doing it or not, uh, it seems to me that the state's fairly well secure, right? Like the the state itself, the idea of the state, which it is just an idea. It's it's people using violence on other people. That's and what when the you say is. the state you're not talking about like California, Arizona, New Hampshire. You're you're talking about the concept of a geographic region that has a monopoly on the quote unquote legitimate use of force. Yeah, I mean that's why I'm talking about the state as a general term, but we could be talking about California or Georgia or whatever. I mean it whatever. It doesn't really matter which state we're we're discussing. Um but yeah, there could be people making decisions to try to influence people in one way or another but ultimately it doesn't really matter to me because the state is uh is well you know it's cemented in people's minds uh people believe in the state the state's not going anywhere anytime soon and you know as much as you and i might like to see that change uh, in fact we're actually working to try to move populations we're right uh, we moved to new hampshire as part of the free state project now we're not involved in the state thank goodness but our idea is to move liberty-minded people, people who care about freedom, I don't care where they're from in the world, as long as they love liberty, uh, come to New Hampshire. Help us create a more free place so we can show the rest of the world what freedom really means. As far as some state bureaucrat in California trying to get one group of people to move in so it'll help you know, shift an election, who cares? Both of the sides on the election are for the state anyway in California. So, you know, what does it matter one way or another? They're just going to grow the state in way, you know, in, in one way, way X or way Y or way Z. It doesn't matter to me. All I care, all I care about is getting people who love freedom all to, or as many of them as possible to move to New Hampshire and join the Free State Project. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more about that. We'll come back with your calls about whatever you want. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here to bring up anything that you'd like. You can also join us on Skype, by the way. I don't know if I've mentioned that often enough. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. If you have Skype, send a quick contact request over to lrn.fm. We'll approve it. It usually takes us a segment or so to get to approving it because, you know, I don't have a producer here. It's just me and Daryl, and so we do all of our own producing. Uh, so we'll get you approved, and then after you're approved, it'll be easy to call on Skype. So use username lrn.fm to contact us there and call us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Join us online, of course, over at freetalklive.com as we continue with your calls and thoughts, everything from police abuse to immigration to a zombie nativity scene. Those are the things we've talked about so far tonight. Of course, you can take control of the airwaves here, as Will will do in Madison, Wisconsin, listening to the Mike 92.1 WXXM. Hey, Will. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. And you guys are doing a wonderful show <clears throat> that's much needed. Welcome, sir. I'm speaking to you as a Vietnam vet that supposedly was fighting to preserve the rights that we have in this country. And over <laughs> the years, I've seen those rights be diminished year after year, day after day. And I'm speaking of the right of assembly, mm. of free speech. And during these last few years, I've seen a ramping up of free speech being curtailed by arrested journalists which never have happened in the past. I see the regular media as being a mouthpiece for government. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I want to make a special inference to CNN. Every time there's a shooting, CNN runs out and gives the police department side of the story without an investigation. Yep. So we're losing those rights, and I see free speech, uh, free press as the foundation of a democracy, even though we declare ourselves to be in a democracy, we are not. Well, I don't so, declare myself to be a democracy, nor do I declare myself to be anything in relation to politics and the political system. But I can appreciate almost everything you said there. I really, you know, I, I, I'm first of all, I'm sorry that you you went to Vietnam, and secondly, I'm really sorry that you thought you were fighting for freedom, and now you've you've had to watch it all slip away uh, over time. Of course, you probably would acknowledge that. Um, Vietnam didn't actually secure any extra freedom in the United States, nor did it, you right. know, help the Vietnamese people either. 
right. I acknowledge that. Yeah. And I'm not I'm 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 not I'm not punishing myself because I went to Vietnam. I don't try to justify my going. Right. But I what what I'm saying is that people need to pay attention to what's going on. Because totally they are agree. not living under the system in which they believe they're living under. Now, let me just slightly modify one thing that you said, and uh, tell me if you agree with my modification. You said that uh, free press and free speech is a cornerstone of democracy. I would say that free speech and free press is a cornerstone to a free society. Would you agree with my modified version of what you said? Yes, I agree 100% with that. You just said it more eloquently than I could. Yeah, I think that's an important modification because it's also important to keep in mind that democracy isn't necessarily so great, right? Because if 51% of the people in the democracy decide they don't want free speech anymore— It doesn't even have to be 51%. Yeah. Right. It has to be a plurality of people that show up on election polls. day. Yeah, yeah. So, so it could, in theory, depending on how many choices you have on the ballot, you know, it could be as little as you know 20% could win the election and then you figure only 40 percent of the people showed up so you've got 20 percent of 40 percent and i i'm not you know wanting to do math on in my head but you know that's a very small percentage of people (laughs) that are dictating to the rest of the people what is going on well there's not much i can disagree with you i agree with that and i'll even take it farther i don't believe that people in this country will get the freedom are what they need by going to the ballot box. It won't come from the ballot box. It'll come from people. Yeah, I think you're right about that. It has to be a grassroots change. And and I, you know what? There's not. I, there's really not much I can disagree with you here. Well, you've said it eloquently. You've said it well. And I thank you for the call tonight. I really appreciate your perspective, and I appreciate hearing from you. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero. 3733. Well, you know, at the same time that we're seeing a, a crackdown on independent media and media in general, because, you know, not even the mainstream media is safe, as our uh, photographer friend Virgil, who called in in the first hour, pointed out, there was a mainstream media reporter down at the die in that happened in Beaver, right. Beaver Creek, Ohio, and she was also threatened by uh, the police. Well, and remember a couple of months ago in Ferguson, there were the journalists that were arrested in the McDonald's. Yep. Uh, Then there were other journalists that were tear gassed. There was another journalist that had a gun pointed at him and the cop said, I will effing kill you. I mean, the police are definitely doing all of this to themselves. They don't have to be as awful as they are being, and they're going to they're going to reap what they sow. And I don't mean in the form of violence. I mean, they're going to reap it in the form of people are going to show them for what they really are. And that's one of the things that's nice about this, you know, you know this new media world where anyone who can pick up a smartphone is a reporter. And that, I think, is is really valuable. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. And that's something that they can't stop from happening. They, the police will not be able to stop the spread of technology. And the only thing they can do is try to intimidate you into not using it. And right. please don't let them do that. And then you've got people like Diane Feinstein, who's one of the senators from California, saying that, well, we need to define journalists so that some kid with a camera and a blog isn't considered a oh, journalist. Boy. Yeah, that's just what we need. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Jeffrey's in Albuquerque listening to Kiva. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, Thanks, man. A lot of good stuff tonight. Um, It always bothers me when I hear people refer to people coming to this country um, to try and make it better for lives for themselves as those people. Mm. Um, That's that's really disturbing when, in fact, most of the people who are receiving financial welfare – um, from the government of the United States are actually American citizens. Of course. Um, secondly, another point. Not to mention corporations regarding- as well. They're also getting a whole bunch of welfare. Yeah. Well, more more than individuals when you think about oh, it, yeah. and, uh, and and that's that's even more disturbing. Yep. Secondly, uh, the gentleman was talking about people leaving other countries because they can't make a living farming in Central and South America and possibly coming here to farm. Well, if anybody knows anything about farming. If you can't make a living in South and Central America farming, you're not just going to show up in the United States and decide you're going to be a farmer and start making a living at that. Um, The people that write the so-called free trade agreements are the people that stand to make the most money, and that's a corporatocracy. So while I am totally in agreement with what you said, that if there was true free trade, the world would be a much better place. Mm. The free trade that that we know and that that we're used to is the free 
free trade dictated by those people who control the money. Therefore, it's not free trade. It's free trade according to how we can make more money from free trade. And yeah. only and in so, certain uh, industries. That There are some industries uh, that are totally exempt from the NAFTA and CAFTA and GATS and the WTOs. Uh, absolutely. And, and what, it's, what it's really meant to do is exploit other countries that don't have protections in place for, for industries, for their workers, um, and so on and so forth on down the line to where we can kind of go in there and be the first or one of the first people to exploit them to squeeze as much money out of them um, without having to be accountable on many, many levels. Well, I would like to say I right don't failure. consider myself uh, exploitive. I've never gone into another country and exploited anyone. <laughs> Uh, so be careful when you use the term "we," right? Like you didn't mean you and I. You meant the like the U.S. No, you know corporatocracy. I'm, I'm, I'm still referring to the people that write the quote unquote yeah, free trade okay. agreement. Right? Don't call yourself them. And then, so, so be careful. So, no, he he was so you talk, talking as if he were them. Oh, as though he were them. I see. Well, okay. Right, and 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 you nailed it. You nailed it just right when the gentleman was discussing like the quote unquote illegal aliens. I'm not sure if there's anything uh, that is really an illegal person. I don't know if a person can be illegal. But you, you had it right when you said ad populum because it seems to be um, a, a political phrase that sparks outrage with a, with, a, with a base of voters to where people can, like, you know, gain votes, basically. And mm -hmm. so when we talk about illegal aliens and immigrants coming here to steal your jobs, it's like, you know what? If we lost all the people that came here from this country, let's just say in the last 30 years that came here – um, to seek a better life, if they were magically taken off. Oh, my God, uh, the economy would be decimated. Right what, do you, what do you think this country would look like? It would be decimated. Businesses would be shutting down left yeah. and right because no would be coming to work. Thanks for the call tonight, Jeffrey. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Plenty of time here for you to dial in toll-free on this live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. There's more on the way. 855-450-FREE. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments and I'll send you something weird. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, 
tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program and kind of a bizarre, extra long feeling. It feels like a Sunday to me for whatever reason right now, and I don't know why that is. It's the... Uh, Christmas holiday season kind of throws the week off for me. Yeah, because the holiday or the weekend kind of started on like Thursday. Yeah, well, at least it, well, I guess some people went to work on Friday, but probably not too, too many of them. Anyway, you're welcome to share your thoughts with us here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Everything from a zombie nativity scene to photographers being arrested, uh, pressing of the, the oppression of the media, as well as immigration. We've been on those topics. Of course, you can bring up anything here toll-free at 855-450-FREE and join us online at freetalklive.com. Let's go back to the phones and the fun. We've got Willie. He's in Atlantic City. You're on Free Talk Live. Willie, listening to WPG. No malice, gentlemen, with malice to what none, in the words of Abraham Lincoln in the launching of the uh, Civil War. And uh, that's what was happening then and what's happening now. And I just want to glide over a couple of things. I want to mention we have uh, talk radio here in Atlantic City from 6 in the morning to 10 at night. And I can tell you, you guys are one of the first uh, are they about the only ones that make some sense of what really is going on? And I'm talking <laughs> about things done, not analyzation. For example, like a person was shot, he was died. Okay, that statement stands on its own, things done. And then you will go to what was the cause, you know, and we don't necessarily have that. This foolishness, I born and raised in Selma, Alabama, worked the civil rights movement, Dr. King and the young, the whole work. We had the same problem then. They did not want us to vote. They did not want uh, people in Mississippi to vote. They, and they was fighting this Cesar Chavez in 63. Well, Willie, even if you do vote, it doesn't matter anyway because the choices they give you are a bunch of crap. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if you vote or not. Yeah, it do, yeah I understand what you're saying on that. But some cases, if you really have a demon, you it doesn't matter. Like we've had some people in office here the city council and one or so with mayor were criminals and we had to get them out, you know, <laughs> but basically what you are saying is there's a team. One guy would say to the Republic, I'm not going to do this. You don't do this for me. So you're like over the barrel. And I understand that. And I agree with oh, that. Yeah. Totally. But this history, you, you see, it is not the, the, just the border. It is uh, politics, and I believe if you look at what I'm saying, it was there in 63, 64, Nelson Mandela over in South Africa, Cesar Chavez out with the farm workers all out in California. It was all about the vote. And if you remember, Fannie Lou Hamer was right here in, in uh, Atlantic City, the Democratic National Convention. And I myself in, in Selma, in my hometown. So this is no accident. So that stands on its own, these two political parties, just want to tie us to like a mule and a chain hook to one foot and just rip you loose. 
Yeah, it's that's cool. true. Willie, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing you from you. Have they, a good day. Yep. We'll, we'll be listening. We will. Keep thanks, brother. Live talk. We will do that. We will do that here. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And it's certainly sad but true that Free Talk Live is one of the few talk shows out there on syndicated radio in the United States that actually, you know, understands <laughs> to some extent what's happening out there with, you know, the Republicans and Democrats being two sides of the same coin. Yeah, uh, they're two sides of the big government op- uh, apparatus and neither of them is calling for uh, sm- for less government in people's lives. Sure, the Republicans will say those things, but they don't actually mean it. And there's proof right. And if you it. want proof that they don't mean it, look at the first six years of the George W. Bush That's administration, right. where the size of the federal government grew drastically. Yeah, I remember there was some politician, Trent somebody or other, who uh, said at one point, I think toward the middle point of that decade, there was an actual quote where he said they'd cut government to the bone. That they yes. had sliced it to the bone. It was they could not cut it back any further. It was as small as it could possibly well, be. Well, and they actually said that uh, <laughs> during the last time that they had the debate over raising the debt ceiling. Oh, and yeah. ultimately they got rid of the debt ceiling until some, you know, d- time I, I think middle of next year the debt ceiling is you know there is no debt ceiling until middle of next year and they were talking about you know well we need to rein in spending but we can't we've cut it to the bone yeah you believe that one they'll tell you another one the toll-free number here tonight is 855 450 free unfortunately people seem to hold uh divergent beliefs about the state like one of their beliefs could be that Politicians are corrupt and not trust you. You know you can't trust them as far as you can throw them. But then on the other hand, they still seem to believe that there's something that can be fixed about this system. That right. there's some magical politician sitting out there just waiting to be elected that's going to wave his magic wand and and fix it all. Well, and then and, there's also the people that hold the thought of we just need to throw the bums out. Yeah. Except for my Congress guy, he's he's a good one. But it's the other 434 that are bad. And the thing is, everybody in the other 434 congressional districts, for the most part, you know, the majority of people think the same. Let's talk to Steve. He's in also in Atlantic City. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hey, Ian and Daryl. I'd just like to make a point about the immigration from Mexico and a possible reason why it's happening. Okay. Besides all the other reasons, I think that it is um, they're actually running those Mexicans out. And if you took a poll, you would find out that 90% of those people that are being run out of their country are Catholic. I think it's religious persecution, but nobody wants to bring it up. That's what I think it is. Um, Is there any evidence of that? Well, it seems like there's enough swinging... Mexican people going to ch- Catholic churches. They've always gone to Catholic churches. They're a fairly Catholic no, 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 population. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean no, here? No, 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 no. You mean they're go- here? Here's- okay. Hmm. There's more Mexicans ending up in Catholic churches throughout the area. Well, um, I mean, that's correlation think- is not causation, right? So, like, you're seeing more uh, Hispanic folks showing up in church. Uh, in the area, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're being persecuted for their religion in, in Mexico. I mean, you'd, you'd need some sort of evidence to, to make a claim like that. Yeah, you're being run, they're being run out. By whom? The, gov- the government is helping them get over across the Rio Grande River to get here. Well, why would they help they the people they're persecuting? To get rid of them. Where, but the thing is, you haven't provided any evidence that there is any such persecution going on, and you're just speculating, right? Because you don't uh, have it. It's just my, my opinion. Okay. There's there's a great upswing in um, Mexican people, not not his, not Puerto Ricans, not any other nationality. Specifically Mexicans. Specifically okay. Mexicans. They're nice. They're good people. They're hard okay. workers. And, and businesses are profiting by these people who are coming in willing to work for lower wages so that they're not religiously persecuted. Right. And you would agree, of course, that if if it's true, you know, let's say what you're saying mm-hmm. is true and they are being persecuted uh, for their religion, that people who are being persecuted for whatever reason, uh, you know, as long as they're peaceful, should be able to come to the United, the United States without begging permission from a bureaucrat, right? Well, 
they should be able to come here, but there should be some kind of a line or so that they're so that they're screened. That's what I think. But what about make freedom? Sure I mean, what about why not freedom? Why don't we try that? Let you know, just let good people make, come. Make sure, make sure you're not sick. Sort of like what they did at Ellis Island. Yeah, That's but what I think. If you wanted to sail down the coast and come into the United States, you no, could no, do no. that. Make it make a point of entry. Make a point or port of entry. And as you come in, you're screened. Hmm. Okay. Perfectly healthy why, not, why don't we screen everybody? Let's let's take that. I mean, if that's such a good idea, let's just set up random well, screenings. You could just be driving to work, actually, and we're actually working our way. We're actually working our way towards a national ID card. But do you want to see I'm that? Bring that up now. Is that what you no, want to see happen? Well, that's no. the thing, man. If you want to come up, if you want to come up with ideas of how to control people, before you know it, you shouldn't be surprised when somebody's trying to control you. You know, if you want to have a line that people have to wait in before they get screened by some bureaucrat for whatever reason, before they can come here to make a better life for themselves, then don't be surprised when all of a sudden they start setting up random checkpoints to do the same thing to you right in your city where you live. I mean, how would you feel about that? Go to the boot end of Texas and talk to the doctors where the hospitals are going bankrupt. That's all I have to say. Have a nice night. All right. Well, thanks for the call tonight. Look, uh, I understand that there's some law that forces hospitals to take anybody that walks through the doors, and that's probably what he was referencing there. I don't support forcing people to provide services to others, and I don't support using force, uh, which is what the government does, against peaceful people who are coming here. And I don't support the presumption that somebody who's coming here may be a bad guy, and so therefore they have to wait in some line to be checked out by a doctor or some bureaucrat and they have to fill out paperwork. I don't support it because I support freedom. And if you don't support freedom, that's fine. Just come right out and say it. Because you can't have it both ways. You can't have it where you get to be free, but other people get to be restricted. It doesn't work that way. You're going to end up being unfree too. Is that what you really want? Because that's what you're getting. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here tonight. 855-450-3733. Your comments on immigration or whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Attention men, are you urinating often, waking at night to urinate? We want to send you a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate, made with a natural ingredient that supports healthy urine flow, bladder emptying, and is shown to reduce waking at night from the urge to urinate. You can try Super Beta Prostate free. Only pay shipping and handling. This free giveaway is available while supplies last. For details, just call 800-659-5412. That's 800-659-5412. Call 800-659-5412. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, December 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.07 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $320. 
Antiwar.com reports a pair of U.S. drone strikes destroyed a house and vehicle in the Shawal Valley of Pakistan's North Waziristan Agency, killing at least nine people, including four who officials say had been ethnic Uzbeks. The Uzbeks were said to be killed in the U.S. attack on the vehicle, though officials conceded they haven't actually confirmed this and that the ethnicity of the victim was just something they heard. The other five people killed are totally unidentified, even nominally, though officials say they believe the house destroyed belonged to a leader in the Punjabi Taliban. Still, they have no idea if the Punjabi Taliban leader was in the house at the time or indeed if it was even his people who were hit. The U.S. has been picking up the rate of drone strikes in Pakistan in recent weeks, a sore spot in U.S.-Pakistani relations, though most recently Pakistan has been mum on the attacks. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bobs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbobs.com. The Associated Press reports the Vatican has arrested the feminine activist who on Christmas Day bared her chest and snatched the statue of baby Jesus in the life-size nativity scene in the center of St. Peter's Square, according to a spokesman on Friday, emphasizing that the protest insulted the faithful gathered to celebrate Christmas. Ukrainian activist Yana Zidanova was being held for questioning with possible charges including carrying out obscene acts in public, insults, and theft. The topless woman grabbed the baby Jesus statue about an hour after the Pope offered his Christmas blessing on Thursday. A Vatican guard immediately covered her with his cape and detained her while Zidanova was clutching the figure shouting, God is woman. Vatican spokesman Reverend Federico Lombardi noted that the incident was being taken seriously both because of the location and the solemnity of the event on which it intruded, saying it aimed to intentionally offend the religious feelings of numerous people. He noted that three members of the feminine activist group had previously targeted the Vatican with another protest last month, bearing their chest, as is the feminine hallmark, in St. Peter's Square to protest the Pope's visit to the European Parliament. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Antiwar.com reports, recent reports out of the Islamic State territory are declaring the region a failed state with shortages of medicine and rising food prices. The major city of Mosul has run out of chlorine, making its drinking water dangerous. The Islamic State capital of Raqqa isn't much better, with electricity available only a few hours a day, and the Islamic State struggling to provide food aid to many people in need. Though being spun as a failure of leadership by the Islamic State, such sites are pretty common in war zones, and all of the Islamic State territory is undergoing regular bombardment by the U.S. and its allies, while U.S. sanctions aim to prevent commerce from the oil-rich Syrian territory of the Islamic State. The Islamic State is attempting to manage this abroad with propaganda videos, claiming the situation inside the territory is much better than it actually is. This, far from being a sign of a failed state, is pretty standard for government in the region, especially when times are tough. Perhaps the bigger concern for the U.S. and other nations at war with the Islamic State is how little territory they've managed to wrest from them in the past few months of attacks. The Islamic State has lost some villages and seized others, but it seems more durable than anyone expected. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
Congress today passed a landmark Social Security reform bill they estimate could save the troubled program billions. The so-called grab life by the balls bill includes provisions to cut the cost of cigarettes in half, outlaws helmets, and adjusts the CDC's recommended amount of sleep from eight hours a night to when you're dead. The bill's short-term initiatives aim to immediately cut Social Security costs in half by replacing senior citizens' monthly checks with vouchers for grain alcohol and extreme sports. I, I got this coupon to motocross over a canyon. I, Better do my part to help the deficit. Supporters in Congress say the cost will be offset by the so-called pussy tax on products such as sweaters, vegetables, hand soap, and flu shots. America, would you rather die old, broke, and forgotten, or die a mother legend? The new program follows in the footsteps of the Life is a Cartoon Medicare campaign, which encourages seniors to run full speed off of cliffs and smoke sticks of dynamite. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the live Saturday edition of the program. We do this show live seven nights per week from 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time every single day. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. And by the way, that includes every day during the holidays. We were here Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. We're going to be here New Year's Eve as well. So please join us at all of those times if you get the chance. And, of course, you can join us on your local radio station in a lot of cases. If, you are, if you're not hearing us on your local station, if you're listening online, for instance... You can contact your local talk station and ask them real nice like when you talk to the program director there. Get the program director on the phone, hopefully, if not, leave a message and say, hey, you'd like to hear some free talk live. You'll you enjoy the station, but free talk live would make it even better. So join us here, toll free, 855 450 free. We've been talking about all kinds of stuff here tonight from the zombie nativity scene under fire by a city in Ohio to tracking people with technology and technology being sort of a double edged sword, immigration as well. All has been on the table, and of course, you can bring up anything you want. Let's go to Ray, listening in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hey, Ray. Hey, thanks, guys. And uh, first time calling in there. Ed, uh, Welcome, sir. Um, uh, it sounds like you totally agree with me about the federal government being way too big and doing and way too much in our affairs and everything else. And a true conservative does not live by dictating to other people how to live. They let, a true they conservative. Thing, and they leave everybody else alone. Huh? Well, that okay, that's an interesting claim because I mean almost everybody who claims to be a conservative doesn't want to leave people alone in my experience. They they want to force their uh, religious viewpoint on them or they want to force their more particular moral system on other people. Uh, you know, that's what I've seen from conservatives. Daryl, what's been your experience? Yeah, it seems that, you know, people that for the most part, people that call themselves conservatives claim to support small government but yet they want to you know have a very large military they want the military to be involved in places around the world they want to throw people in jail for possessing plants so are you saying that uh, that those people who want those things ray that daryl just mentioned that those are not true conservatives i i agree yes uh, i i consider myself a conservative and I, and I consider the Republicans have uh, destroyed the term conservative. So then as uh, a conservative, let me just run through a quick uh, litmus test here for you. As a true, so-called true conservative, do you support the right to bear arms? Yes, I do. Do you support the right to bear arms without having to fill out any government paperwork whatsoever and concealed carry if you just darn well feel like it? Yes, I do. Do you support the right to grow marijuana? Yes, I do. All right, all right. I'm not sounding too conservative here, uh, because usually a conservative is going to bristle at this. What about heroin? Should people be able to sell and, and buy heroin? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, a true conservative, uh, medical decisions are left to the, the, the person. Uh, so uh, if, uh, we, the federal government needs to be completely out of medical decisions. How about this one? How about this one? Uh, a true conservative, do you support eliminating the federal government, meaning that you would no longer have federal governments, we'd have 50 state governments? Uh, no, for, no, we do need uh, – uh, I'm not an anarchist. Okay. <laughs> and, All right. I, do, I do believe that there is a role for the federal government. What about bringing the troops limited? home? What about bringing the troops home from around the world, from all the uh, countries that they're occupying? Yeah, like, and there's like some 900-some-odd bases yeah. worldwide. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, well, right. what about prostitution? Should that be legal? Uh, what happens between consenting adults, uh, money, whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. Polygamy. Uh, uh, well, again, I'm talking about the federal government. Okay. The state government's different. And, uh, Federal well, wait government. a minute. Well, wait, wait. How would it? Now, are you saying a state government should handle that different? Like, should handle polygamy differently? So you're saying keep the federal government out of polygamy, but the state government should. So you sound like an anti-federalist, not a conservative. Okay, uh, I haven't thought of it that far. It, uh, no. Uh, well, what about I, polygamy? I don't think we got a straight I, answer on that one. What about polygamy? Okay, uh, no. Uh, uh, the federal government, when it comes to marriage has no business whatsoever. What about the state government, right? Like a conservative... Right, our questions weren't about what should the federal government be involved in. It's what do you think any government anywhere should be involved in. Right. Okay. Do do you think that people should go to jail for possessing, growing, or trying to sell cannabis? At the state level. At any level. Or at any any level, yeah. You know, it could be the town level. It could be, you know, the neighborhood level. Any level. Should somebody go to jail for possessing, growing, or selling cannabis? No, I personally do not agree. But uh, I believe that there is a role for the government. What is it? What what do you want to see the government do? Uh, Roads, schools, uh, our, our, our defense, but we don't need 900 bases for our defense. We're spending $600 billion dollars. Uh, a year on defense, and, uh, and, and what about what about this a question? Another question for you here. Now I'm just trying to fail you out. Understand what you think the you know the true conservative beliefs. So uh, you said okay. government should take care of schools. What if I don't want to consent? What if I, as somebody who uh, doesn't agree with the government schools, decides I would rather not fund those? What should happen to me? Uh, that's an error because I, I honestly believe that there should be. Uh, the government should be there to take care of the people that don't want to do it themselves or don't have the knowledge or the power to do it themselves. There should be a minimum level that the government takes care of. You should be able to opt out of any government program and do it on your own. If you have the money— He's, He the sounds power, more libertarian to me than anything else. I mean, how, what, how, what makes you different from a libertarian? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I I I'm here in Indiana uh, helping the liber- I I I give my money to the Libertarian Party. I, why not I'm call yourself not- a why, why not call yourself a Libertarian then? Because when you use the term conservative, it evokes all of these uh, preconceived notions that people have about conservatives, which is usually that you know they want to have a war on drugs, that they want to control other people's morality, they want to stop prostitution, they want to interfere in other people's consensual choices. And, you know, you're just aligning yourself with those things without necessarily realizing it. Putting the word true in front of it doesn't doesn't really specify to anyone what you actually believe. It sounds like libertarianism is more appropriate of a description for you, even if not, you know, even if you're not a pure anarchist or something like that. And that's okay. But uh, and, and it could be argued that what you're advocating would be true liberalism because, you know, like 200 years ago, people that held those beliefs— would be liberals. a liberal, not a conservative. Yeah, that's a good point. So, Ray, yeah. I would I would consider a re I would consider taking some time to really think about that because the terms liberal and conservative they just you know they don't mean the same thing to every people. And of course, libertarian doesn't necessarily mean the same thing to everybody that comes across right. the term either. But I, I would say it's more accurate for you. And and thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. And also, one of the problems with uh, the libertarian movement is that it's too frequently aligned with conservatism. Like, it's right. seen as this sort of place for wayward conservatives to uh, to end up. Not that there's, there's anything wrong with that. That's just the way, uh, you know, it's kind of been uh, perceived. Right, especially when you had, and luckily, this certain individual has left the Libertarian Party and returned to the Republican Party, but you had people Bob like Barr. Wayne Root and Bob Barr. Yeah. Wayne Root called himself Mr. Libertarian Jeez. and was quoted in the St. Louis newspaper in 2010 when he was running for chair of the party is saying, I want to redefine libertarianism to mean conservative. Sick.
And I think that's really that's really dangerous because the libertarian movement is much larger than a, bu- a bunch of former conservatives. There, right, and it's are, much larger than the Libertarian Party. Yes, there are, don't get me wrong, there are people who've come from the right and joined the Libertarian movement. And there and, are people that have come from the left. And there are people who've come from neither, who've just come out of nowhere, you know, that they were apolitical before. They right. didn't uh, much care for the right or the left, but they didn't know there was another option. And so just keep all of that in mind as we go to your calls and thoughts here. Bobby's in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hey, Bobby. Yeah, hello there. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to talk to you about uh, my opinion on the immigration. Uh, Please do. United States of America. Yeah, United States of America is a government of laws. So if I go out here <laughs> Poorly written and law, randomly enforced. And I'm sure you have read all of them. Hang on, Bobby. We'll bring you back here in a moment. You can tell us about all the law reading you've done in your life. How many tomes of laws has Bobby taken the time to sit down and read? And how about you? That's what you've been doing with your holiday weekend, right? Trying to catch up on all the new legislation yep. for 2015. 855 450 free. You're not a good American if you don't. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. So what would you imagine how long this body was sitting there for? A matter of weeks? Months? Probably months. Months? There were about 25 or 30 dead cats in the house. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it, it was not a pretty scene. Literally, it was from the floor to the ceiling. This person had put newspapers and magazines, Life magazine, going back probably to day one, and Geographic going back into the previous century, and food boxes that were... You know, ancient, <laughs> and she had she had lived through a tunnel that basically connected her bedroom area to a bathroom. What about the and, kitchen? Did she not prepare food? She kept food in the bedroom, uh-huh. and then had a. That's nice. She, I guess she used her window to get in and out. That's the best we could figure wow. out. Wow. Yeah, this is no problem that a good coat of fire wouldn't fix. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. 
if he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. We're here live on this Saturday evening, and joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. There are a variety of different features you'll find on our site. Something you'll also find is that it's all free. Those other talk show hosts in the business, most of them, they want to charge you five, six, seven, eight bucks a month for their websites. Ours is free, so enjoy at freetalklive.com. Coming up on March 28th and 29th at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, it's the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. And uh, we were there last year, Mark and myself. Uh, Daryl, you weren't there, but you actually lived in Texas for a while. I did. And you know that everything's bigger in Texas. At least that's what they claim. That's what they claim. And uh, I did see the largest squirrel that I had ever uh, encountered in Texas. It was huge. It was like this giant squirrel uh, that towered over this place outside of Austin. And I was really impressed with the size of this squirrel. It was like a squirrel statue thing. Oh, okay. I I thought you were talking about a real life squirrel no, for a it was second gi- gigantic uh so i was impressed with that i was also impressed with the texas bitcoin conference it was happening at a racetrack le- uh, in 2014 and that was cool but the new location is actually going to be right in the heart of downtown austin this other location was sort of out in the the sticks uh, away so i'm excited they're moving it to downtown because to me that's where a conference should happen that's you know it's kind of where things are happening is in a downtown and so it's going to make it more fun i think texas bitcoin of course there's going to be great speakers and exhibitions you'll have an opportunity to network which is what these things are all about and they'll be hosting the second million dollar bitcoin 2.0 hackathon they'll be highlighting what bitcoin means to everyone at the texas bitcoin conference and they'll be concentrating on where the technology can go beyond just being a currency so if you want a glimpse into the future you'll want to be in austin texas on march 28th and the 29th you can get tickets. They're $150, but you save $25. So knock 25 bucks off of that cost by using code FTL. That's FTL like Free Talk Live when you go and get your tickets at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Plus, when you use code FTL, another $25 of that ticket price will be donated to Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based charity operating in Florida, helping out the homeless. So go to TexasBitcoinConference.com, and we will look forward to seeing you there. Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live again this year march 28th and 29th at the moody theater in downtown austin tickets get a discount with code ftl at texasbitcoinconference.com as we go back to the phones and to the fun let's talk to john he's in myrtle beach you're on free talk live hey john you're listening to wrnn yeah um on the immigration factor yes sir with the population increase i don't think it's a numbers game on race or politics i think it's survival I think, actually, this country, and probably most of your listeners would probably have to agree who do their research on the Internet from 2013 on the programs that were shut down with NASA due to the sequester, quit sequester, is that they're preparing for a catastrophe in this country. Hold on. Slow down one moment. I didn't quite understand. John, I didn't quite follow what you were saying. You are saying NASA programs were shut down? I, what did yes. you say? Yes. Darn it, that October the 1st when the government was shut down. NASA's programs were shut down. The space grid uh, program was shut down, which was catching incoming objects from space. <clears throat> and um, a private group, if you go to Dr. Phillips, I don't know if I can give him a plug or not, spaceweather.com, they erected a space tower out of Texas to catch incoming objects. Uh, NASA's websites were shut down two weeks longer than any other government uh, website was shut down. Um, we all know the prep that the government's done. I mean, you don't have to be conspiracy to theorists to, to see it with the ammunition, the MRAB, before it became national news. Well, the places. government has been buying ammunition and yeah. armored vehicles well, for, for decades. It's, 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 it's medical stuff. Just in the past year, in 2013. But I what, think a, three, what are you... Okay, so just slow down for a moment here. So you're saying that... The that immigration is somehow resulting in NASA's programs being shut down, or am I missing something? No, 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 no. I think it's in pre- 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 preparation 
for a catastrophe. That the numbers is the game. Survival rate is the game. The numbers. When you have a catastrophe happen, the Congress came out last week. What does that have to do with immigration? I'm, I'm not sure what that has to do. I know, I know, I know. But government, uh, the Fox News, CNN came out last week and said it's all over the uh, ABC News, NBC News, about how Congress came up and said the United States does not prepare for a catastrophe, either be natural or nuclear. How does it blue? Now, that tells me I'm going, what, really? I'm 45 years old. I went through the Cold War. This country's been prepared for catastrophes since the day I was born. Now we're coming out and saying we're not prepared for it, and that we need to do some kind of Congress committee uh, looking into it on how we can prepare. And I'm saying, what? Because I've been keeping up with this stuff for years. So Always what you're saying you is, is, you have to bear with me. I'm I'm doing my best to try to understand it. Daryl has a uh, confused look on his face here as well. So you're saying uh, that the there are people in the government and the media who are saying people aren't prepared in the United States for a catastrophe, but you are asserting that people are prepared. No, I'm saying the government has been prepared now for— You're saying the eight. government is prepared. Right, and yeah, that's and different than what you said food. Fox and CNN said. You said Fox and CNN yeah, well, no, said no, no, people no, 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 aren't no. prepared. I I, hey, J- hey, Jack, I'm from South Carolina. It's hard for you to understand me. But look, look oh, at Oh, I can understand you. I'm from the South. I, I, I understand people. all of the words you're saying, but it's you seem to connecting. be contradicting Google. yourself and jumping all over the I, place. Well, I'm South Carolina, right? Say, uh, look up Google, Congress looking up. United States is not prepared. What is the point? I mean, what are you trying to what are you trying to drive at here? The immigration factor is not about politics. It's about survival of the country. When you say the immigration factor, are you saying that immigration should be restricted in order to help the country survive? No, no, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying immigration. I'm just telling you what is that they are flooding this country with immigrants, whether it be Who's flooding the country? Are you saying there's some elite group that is somehow uh, manipulating people into coming here? No, I'm not saying that. Well, I'm who's the government allowing it to happen to prepare the population for reduction in population because of a catastrophe? So they're allowing increasing the population to prepare for a reduction in population from a natural catastrophe versus the asteroid strike versus whatever. <laughs> I know you right. Okay. Hey, man, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the government's not allowing people to come in here. They have the Border Patrol. And they're they... not allowing people to come yeah. in here. Are you crazy? What, what did Obama just do? What you're doing, you're being contradictive. No. You're the government's not allowing people to come in here. Uh, the yeah, Obama there's Border Patrol checkpoints people. all over the place. Just because they haven't put up a Dude, fence really? doesn't mean they're I mean, allowing I, people in. I listen to y'all guys every Saturday night. I, I mean, I do dig y'all. Y'all are cool as hell. But it, uh, it's like you all, like you automatically want to argue with somebody, and then you all of a sudden become just as stupid as the person you're talking to. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to argue with everybody that calls the show, but, I mean, what you're saying is, look, I get the point that you're trying to make, and that is— I'm saying that, that the government is allowing well, I don't get all your points. But... On purpose. Well, then why are they raiding businesses and uh, arresting people? You know, why are people did, having their families torn apart? Say, hey, Is that just for show? No, hold on. Did you not just say 45 minutes ago that Democrats and Republicans are just the same thing? Yeah, they are the same Democrats damn thing as far as I'm concerned. Well, there you go. You just answered your own question. Uh, all right, John. Thanks for the call tonight. <laughs> okay. Toll free number 855 450 free. We'll see if we can make some sense of that here in a moment. Or maybe yeah. you can translate for us here. Call in, bring up anything. Free Talk Live. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected 
perfected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices, a 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian. And Daryl. Daryl's got himself his own website. It's fpp.cc, but that is just one of your sites, Daryl. Yes. You're also doing fppradio.com, and that fppradio.com is the site where our listeners should go to get more of you because you do seven days per week Yes. of news. What is that? Yeah, so I do a daily five-minute newscast mm-hmm. that can be heard on lrn.fm as well as several other online radio networks uh i've been doing it since february and unfortunately it's not been uninterrupted there was a three-day interruption when i was in the local jail for refusing to pay a fine but otherwise it's been you know consistent since february there's also a long form 30 minute uh show that i do three times a week 
Right now I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sometime during the next year I will go to five days a week. I just don't know when yet. Well, I know you're going to be going on a tour uh, next year. Yes. And you're fundraising for that right now. So. Yes, I am. Uh, so people can learn more about the tour and donate at tour.fppradio.com. When are you planning on taking off? In the spring? Uh, March 8th. So. At the end of Liberty Forum. Okay. Coming back at the beginning of Porkfest. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Go check out more of Daryl's stuff over at fppradio.com as we go right back into your phone calls and thoughts here. First up, we've got Nick. He's in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Nick. What's up, gentlemen? Hi, Nick. Oh, before you go on, real quick, to our last uh, caller, Daryl, um, any further analysis you want to throw out there about what he was trying to say? So when he first called in, he said, we're a nation of laws and mentioned the U.S. Constitution. Mm-hmm. And I, I've read the Constitution several times. And I can't find anywhere in there where it authorizes Congress to regulate immigration. It authorizes Congress to set up a uniform system of naturalization, but it does not mention that they have the ability to regulate immigration. And there's actually a clause that says that uh, the regulation of immigration must be amended into the Constitution. So I, I want somebody that supports, you know, we're a nation of laws, we need to stop immigrants. Find this mythical clause in the Constitution that allows Congress to do that. Let's go to, again, sorry, Nick, you're back on now for real. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I actually had a totally different topic to ask you guys sure. about. Um, y- you know, the Free State Project, and I'm looking into moving to New Hampshire, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But, Excellent. Um, it, the Free State Project seems like a great idea. It is. But would it not be better as the Free Cheshire Project? Like, why not concentrate all the liberty activists just in Cheshire County? Good question. And then so, try to secede from the state of New Hampshire and so, then try to secede from the Union. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I see where you're coming from. We happen to be in Cheshire County here uh, doing this radio program. We're in Keene, which is the county seat. And um, no, the reason why that wouldn't work is because uh, New Hampshire is not a home rule state. First of all, that's one reason. And uh, counties so in okay. New Hampshire have very little, very little power. Right. And beyond that, the idea of moving people. So for people that don't know if you're new to the show, free, the Free State Project is the idea of moving 20,000 liberty-oriented people. I mean, they might call themselves libertarians or voluntarists. Uh, moving them to the same place or encouraging them to move. The Free State Project doesn't pay for your move or anything like like that. It's just, hey, move here, get active, let's get people active for liberty. And the, the reason why a state was chosen as the political designation rather than a county is because that's where the real political change can be made most effectively is at the state level. And in a small place like New Hampshire... It's a lot easier to affect state politics, and also New Hampshire has the most accessible of the state legislatures. So uh, the legislator gets paid $100 per year here in New Hampshire, which is way less than any legislator in any other of the 49 states. And so it's it's a true kind of citizen legislature, for lack of a better term. It doesn't tend to attract uh, the lawyers, like the professional politicians. These are usually just average folks. They tend to be older because obviously there's a time commitment involved. But uh, it's much easier to get actually elected as a liber- liberty-minded person. We've actually had dozens of Free State Project participants getting elected to various different offices around uh, around New Hampshire. And, and even even before the Free State Project was an idea on paper, there were actually libertarians elected as members of the Libertarian Party to the state legislature in the 90s. Yeah, that's true. And then the Republicans and Democrats decided, let's make ballot access more difficult. But it's okay. Just run as Republicans and Democrats. And now they're you know, getting all up in arms. These libertarians are running as Republicans and Democrats. We need to do something about that. Plus, the other reason why you want it to be at the state level is because it's just easier to attract people. Um, I mean, it's a huge challenge to attract people to move to New Hampshire, period, just because, you know, it's cold. uh, And that's the main excuse. But if there's more options for which people to move, you know, for which 
for them to move toward, right. uh, then that's good because you know not everybody's going to want to live in Keene, New Hampshire. It's a fairly small place. There's not a big economy here. You know, there's not as many available jobs and things like that. Manchester, of course, is a much larger place, and that's going to be more of an attractor. Some people are going to want to live in the state capital. So there's all kinds of reasons why you know it was chosen to be a free state project rather than a free county project. But certainly, there's nothing prohibiting you from organizing a free county project within New Hampshire. Uh, by all means, there are people trying to encourage folks to move to Grafton, which is a town, the town of Grafton. It's also a county, but uh, to move to the town of Grafton, they already have a few dozen Free State Project participants there, and they're already kind of stirring things up at town hall with the various town meetings. There's, so, I think, at least one of them elected as a state, state rep. rep now. Yep, that's right. So does that answer your question, Nick? Uh, it does, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I think the Free State Project, as I've said, is phenomenal. Um, I just wonder about the 20,000 thing. I mean, I, you know, it seems to me like in a state of, what is it, 1.2 million? Mm-hmm. That 20,000 seems like kind of a small number of people. But, I mean, maybe... It's I actually more than we need. Article, so I don't know exactly yeah, so what was... The number was selected by... And I want to thank you for the call. We'll look forward to seeing you here in New Hampshire. We'll tell you more about the 20,000 here. Uh, Nick, thanks for the call. Uh, so the the number was selected by Jason Sorens, who was the guy who founded the Free State Project back in 2001. It was an academic kind of survey or study or whatever that he did. It was like his doctoral thesis or yeah. something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, something fancy like that. And he looked at different migrations for political purposes like, you know, the hippies moving to Vermont or the Mormons moving into Utah and, you know, really showed that, hey, these things can work. And you don't have to have a majority of people. You know, the idea isn't a, an actual takeover of New Hampshire. The idea is to influence New Hampshire in a more pro-liberty direction. And New Hampshire, of course, arguably is the best place to do that because it's already probably the freest of all the, the 50 states. And so, um, you know, the idea being that 20,000 people would influence things. And he revised his uh, numbers later on when he when he realized that the Free State Project was actually attracting super activists, people like you, Daryl, who just keep doing and doing and doing and getting out there and getting an activism in, in as many ways as possible. He revised his number to 2,000. Uh, because there's you know only so many uh, let's say Republican and Democrat activists in New Hampshire, right? And I've heard estimates that there's like 500 of each or something like that. I don't know if that's that's true, but it's not that many. I mean, in any state, there's only so many activists of one political stripe or another. And so the idea is, well, let's outdo those numbers and have more liberty-minded activists here in New Hampshire. And we're already seeing that it's affecting things. The Free State Project's been called the single greatest threat to the state here in New Hampshire. And that's not a physical violent threat. That's a threat of, of ideology. Right. Yeah. And so that's what we're destroying. We're and destroying there, the there idea was somebody of the state. that uh, ran some numbers after this most recent election, and they found that people that have moved to New Hampshire for the Free State Project are getting elected as state reps at a much higher percentage than quote unquote regular people are getting elected oh, as yeah. state reps. Oh, I absolutely believe that's true. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. So if you love liberty and you actually want to see it succeed, you got to get together where other people feel like you do, and that's here. So go to freestateproject.org, and we'll continue with your calls coming up on Free Talk Live. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. 
Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain. Maybe enough time for your call if you're on the line now. If you are not and you still want to get on with us, well, you're probably out of time for tonight, but you can call tomorrow because we do the show live seven nights a week. And I will be joined by Ademo Freeman from copblock.org. Uh, he's back in Keene, and I'm looking forward to having him on the show again. It's been a while since we've had him on, so he'll be joining us for the Sunday edition. Daryl Perry with me tonight. His website, fppradio.com. Our site is freetalklive.com. And you can get on the air here and talk about anything you want. Mike is listening in Alabama in the Mobile area. Hey, Mike, you're on Free Talk Live, tuned to WAVH on the FM band. Hey, Ian, how are you? Welcome, Mike. Go ahead with your thoughts. Okay, here, here, here I got a question for you, two questions. Sure. One, what's the best way if you're, if from, from a libertarian perspective, you have noisy neighbors, they're, they're blaring music or, or whatever, you don't want to call the police on them. No, you don't want to. You you know, getting the state involved is just going to cause more problems. Sure. And so, but you want to deter the noise because you feel like it is bothering you because you know you can hear it obviously. You know, whatever. And talking to them doesn't work. Would you go to the extreme of like printing flyers and passing around to all the other neighbors, pointing out there? Would you would you kind of do it in a peer pressure way? What what would be the best? If you can't call the police, have you encountered these these kind of situations before? 
thankfully, I, I yeah, thankfully my neighbors have been you know relatively well behaved in the the different places that I've lived. Um, but if I did have an issue, I would hope that talking with them would solve it. But if it doesn't, then um, I don't think I would go that far. I mean, odds are good all the other neighbors know that it's that house that's causing the problem too, because well, they're noisy, so it probably is already pretty obvious to them. Um, but if you're saying maybe suggest that the neighbors also go and talk to them, I don't think that's a terrible idea. And people do respond yeah. to to, uh, to peer pressure. Uh, Daryl, what do you think? Well, I, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the situation here. Uh, you're not talking about moving in next door to a frat house and then complaining that the frat house is being noisy. No, and, and it's actually actually I don't have this problem. A friend of mine does, but but but, but he calls the police, and I, I I don't know what to tell him. You know, I don't I don't I don't know what to tell him besides try to use peer pressure and talk to him. You know, it, you know it's it's hard. It's it's hard to you know because because the police come out there and and they warn you and you know they 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 probably you know it's worked it's worked when 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 he's called the police you know it's worked and so um, well apparently you know, not good enough if he's had to call it. them repeatedly so it only works temporarily yeah. that's what you're saying right it only it, works exactly yeah it, it works temporarily. and the other thing that's not going to work i think over time and maybe he'll get lucky and it won't happen to him but in a lot of in a lot of places you know you call the police on your neighbors and before you know it they found a reason to call the police on you right um and right. you know then you've created this you know, hatfields and mccoy's situation where the police are essentially the the gun that is in the room so to speak and that's ah, no good yeah. so if you can't you know if, if uh, persuasion doesn't work if talking to the neighbors doesn't work, if having other neighbors talk to the bad neighbors doesn't work, then, you know, to me, that leaves you with two options. One, buy a pair of earplugs and use them. Uh, or two, get the hell out and move into a neighborhood that has deed restrictions where you have a legitimate uh, gr grievance against somebody who is breaking those deed restrictions. Personally, I don't want to live in a place like that, but for somebody who is really concerned with noise, that may be the, uh, the now, right option. Now, could they build a taller fence that would somehow you know block out a little bit of the noise or diffuse the noise a little bit in some places that'll get you in trouble with the police or the zoning enforcement yeah. right fence is too tall that kind of thing i think he, he he's uh in an apartment complex I, i've had similar situations i always talk to Hold him on. so if he's in an apartment complex oh. i've got an even better idea you can always go to management with issues yeah yeah that's true yeah. You know, um, but again, I still think the best solution is to just get the hell out. I mean, if you don't like noise. Right, especially you if you're in an apartment, right. it's not that difficult to find ways to get out of a lease. You're guaranteed to have issues with neighbors at some point the longer you have an apartment. The closer right. you are to people, the more likely you're going to be irritated by something that they do, whether it's having sex too loud or playing music too loud or best shouting at each other or whatever the issue is. Or um, all of the above at the same time. I've had that kind of neighbor. I believe it. So, you know, just get... The, there's, I don't know, where, where, is, if he's in Alabama, you probably don't have to go too far outside of Mobile to get a place that's nice and rural. And, you know, and, and usually if you're outside of the city, they're cheap. So you can get a place cheap and rural and not have any neighbors anywhere. And then you can go walk around your yard naked. And then that's, you know, you can't you're beat right. that. You're right. No, nah, there's mosquitoes. Quick. You don't want to walk That's around true. naked. No. Hey, hey, Mike, thanks for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. Uh, let's continue with Jack listening in Indianapolis to WIBC. Hey, Jack. Hi, Ian. It's nice to talk to you again. Welcome I, here. I, you're a little more liberal than I am, but I, I always respect your opinion. You're a smart guy, and I respect your opinion. Okay. Um, I don't know what I, it means like to be to, liberal, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, a little more liberal than me. That's all. I'm, a little, I'm, I'm conservative. All right. Um, the thing that – in the immigration thing, this is what scares me about it. Hmm. Um, I've been to Mexico a couple of times, and it's a scary place as far as the standard of living, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid the United States is going to become a third-world nightmare if we get too many immigrants from the third world. Well, if you think about it, that doesn't really make sense, right, because uh, the United States has – gotten to its level of affluence because it has allowed immigrants over the years, people to escape really crappy places in the world and come here and make a better life for themselves. If the U.S. becomes a third world, it won't be because of what immigrants do. It'll be because of what the government does to the United States, by thereby you know uh, making new laws and restrictions and you know trying to tell you how to run your life or how to run your business. That's what destroys the economy. That's what makes people impoverished. It's not poor people 
coming to the U.S., many of the, those poor immigrants in the past to become very, very wealthy people because they came to the United States and they had the freedom to start their own businesses. In fact, immigrants are more likely than uh, people born in the United States by significant factor yes. to actually start their own businesses. And more of them would start their own businesses, including more people from the United States, if the government wasn't standing in the way. So it's the government that keeps poor people poor and they you know, they, they have laws that uh, that do that. So that's where you want to place your blame. So let, let me happens. ask this question. You, you described yourself sure. as a conservative. Sure. And I've pulled up the definition here and the definition noun conservative, conservative okay. is a person who is averse to change and holds to traditional values and attitudes typically in relation to politics. So would you say that that definition fits you? Or are you averse to change? Well, I mean, th this is my point. I mean, when we had immigration before, it was German, and they were mostly German, Italians, and they were educated. They, they, you know, if you look at Germany, they make some of the finest cars in the world, Italy. I mean, it, it, they, these were educated immigrants from educated countries. If you and there were also the people Mexican. coming from Ireland, and people were upset about the Irish coming in. Well, people were upset there were about immigrants the Germans, too. from China. The very first federal immigration law was to limit the number of people coming to the U.S. from China. Sure. sure. And then there but, were I mean, laws take... directed specifically at the Irish. And take... then there were laws directed specifically at other nationalities. Sure. Sure, I, I understand. And look, you know, I'm an Italian immigrant of great grandparents, so I, we got some of that. But I mean, if you take 50 million Mexicans and you start a country, and this isn't a trick question, is the country going to resemble Norway or is it going to resemble Mexico? Well, you know, I, I don't know if I'd want it to resemble Norway. They've got what, like progressive income tax there, oh, taxing well, people yeah, at 80, I mean, 90 percent, <laughs> government health care. Uh, so look at the standard living they have. It's it's a, it's a nice place to live. There's people trying to get there. You know, it, it's just well. There's some people I, trying to get to Mexico. I mean, there's right. uh, well, yeah, J Jeff there Berwick. Are even worse. <laughs> the, the dollar vigilante has. Uh, he lives in Acapulco, and he says it's great down there. Gentlemen, I love your show. Keep up the good Thanks, work. Jack. I do okay. appreciate hearing from you. Call us anytime. Always appreciate it. John is in Tallahassee. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Go ahead, John. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, go for it. Hey, um, I was gonna just kind of question you about a couple things. Uh, you got I'm time for one no, thing. Uh, Go for one right okay. now. Uh, I was trying to understand a while back there where they were bringing the immigrants in, I guess, through Mexico uh, on the trains and then and distributing them all over the United States Who? without them going through any kind of legal process or being checked for diseases and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> I was just wondering what your thought was on that. Who, and who was I, distributing you know, people? Uh it was all over the news. I'm I, I'm surprised you guys didn't hear it. No, you said they were, they were distributing people across the U.S. The Who was distributing the people? Was bring, the government, I guess, was bringing them in. Obama, right? Uh, it's the first I've heard. Himself. It's the first I've he heard of it. The What's the question oh, though? Gosh, I, it was it was all over the news where they were bringing immigrants in from Mexico on trains, and then they were just distributing them all over the United States. Uh, without legal documentation, and I, I, I think you're confused about what I, I remember the story, and they were actually deporting people, but they had to send them through the processing centers to be deported. John, I wish we had more time to talk about this. Uh, call us another night and we can dig in further because we are out of time for tonight. I do appreciate everybody who called in. And if you want to get on tomorrow, call earlier and we'll try to get you in on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Free Talk on Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of... Where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, December 26, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,175, silver around $15.75, and Bitcoin is trading around $322. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, private contractors who once played a major role in the U.S. occupation of Iraq could be heading back to Baghdad. An unnamed senior U.S. government official told Reuters on Wednesday the United States is preparing to ramp up its use of private contractors in Iraq. The official indicated the contractors will be used to support the roughly 1,700 troops in Iraq, along with diplomatic personnel. Since the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, the numbers of private contractors have rivaled troop figures. Critics and viewers agree the interview is less than a masterpiece. But thanks to threats from hackers that nearly derailed its release, it's become an event. Sony Pictures had initially called off the Christmas Day release after major theater chains dropped the movie that would have opened on as many as 3,000 screens. It has been released online as well as serving as a test for a new kind of movie release. The Associated Press reports that online game networks Xbox Live and PlayStation Network were offline much of Christmas Day in an apparent distributed denial of service attack, possibly related to the release. Taking credit for the takedown is a group called Lizard Squad. 